Hello fellow global citizens. Do you have the moment to talk about veganism? The truly grassroots vegan revolution needs your help. The climate is changing and it won't stop until we all do what the good grown-ups on the TV tell us to do. If we all don't do exactly what big finance and the smart grown-ups at the UN, IMF, World Bank, big foundations and Fortune 100 say this poor 16-year-old human shield won't get her future back. This is a real emergency and there is no time to ask questions. Um, what have you done to change your life? Like you said, you do things that you can do to look yourself uh, in the eye and, and, and know you've done enough. What have you done? Um, I have done... Uh... I have stopped flying and I have gone vegan. I have a shop stop. It means you don't buy new things unless you absolutely have to. Oh, hi there. It's uh, Ellen DeGeneres here. Uh, I was scrolling through the gram and I noticed that a lot of people are talking about eating less meat, which I think is a fantastic idea. Um, just, it's a great idea for the planet. It's a great idea for, for your health. It's a great idea for the animal's health. Um, so eat less meat. Unless you're a vegan and you don't eat meat already, then good for you. So you don't even need to pay attention to this. But uh, for the people who do eat meat, just try to eat less of it. Just maybe just uh, maybe eat it less once a week or, or none a week. Or just, you know, like if you eat it every night, don't eat it every night. Eat it less than that. You know, four nights a week would be okay, but like three or two nights, or just one night a week would be the best. Anyway, it's really, the point is it's better for you and it's better for the environment and, uh, and, and for the animals. Eat less meat, hashtag eat less meat. Hey, be neat, no meat. Be neat, eat less meat. Hashtag be neat, eat less meat. Hashtag bye bye. I believe we need to reallocate the world's resources because sharing is crucial. The climate crisis is a battle for solidarity, a battle for human rights and children's rights. I feel so powerful knowing that Ellen the generous and courageous 16-year-old human shield Greta are also vegan activists saving the planet with me. The UN needs to reallocate all the world's land and resources. The science is clear. The smart adults from science say that the global mega corporations in the World Business Council for Sustainable Development like Bayer Monsanto, Unilever, Cargill, Shell, Ikea, Nestle, and the good philanthropists at the Rockefeller Foundation, the MacArthur Foundation, the World Resources Institute, the IMF and the World Bank will all help reallocate all the world's land and resources and ration us sustainable nutrient-fortified plant-based kibble so we can stop off-gassing toxic CO2 and polluting the world with toxic human babies. The British royal family, close friends of philanthropists Jimmy Savile and Jeffrey Epstein, just want to help us reallocate the world's resources to save us from the climate. With all of that activism, some might think you'd be exhausted. But look at you and listen to you, you know the secret. That in fighting, that in giving back, in fighting the good fight, it doesn't exhaust you, it energizes you. This is an emergency and we must do this now. Climate change is a humanitarian issue, not a political one. The transnational corporations, banks, and philanthropists like the UN, the Royal Family, Jimmy Savile, and Jeffrey Epstein need to reallocate the world's resources and feed us nutrient-fortified plant-based kibble to make everything happy and equal. Being vegan is so easy and healthy. I am not a bigot. I will do this for the planet and the children. Let's take a look at vegan YouTube for some recipes for sustainable vegan cuisine we can eat in order to save mommy earth from the real credible death threats from the climate. I'll show you how to do vegan in a food court. Everyone's got a food court in a shopping mall near you. Let's do one here. Let's go. I am so empowered as a member of this truly grassroots and not corporate controlled revolution for the animals and the planet against the bigot science deniers who won't obey the good grown ups on the TV. Vegan pretzel available here. Okay, now most food courts are pretty much the same, all right? Now first off on the left, sushi. You find any sushi place, 
they do vegan sushi at every single sushi place. You make sure they don't put mayonnaise or anything that's not vegan, any sort of weird fish stuff on there. Weird so fish stuff in real animal yeah, foods are so mean and bad and don't belong on my vegan soy sushi. Suffocated and stabbed to death, hacked up into pieces to be put in sushi when you can have vegetables in sushi, tofu in sushi. So many things you can have in sushi that- There are so many good nice things made of soy that we can have instead of bad mean gross racist real foods. Why choose rotting dead fish when you can have vegan sushi? Boom, straight away, a vegan box. Most places do a vegan box now. You don't want to eat any murdered fish here. Look, mercury, fish, suffering, death, no point. A vegan box, delicious, look at that one. Really good. You can always get edamame beans as well. A little seaweed salad as well. Or you can ask them to prepare you some vegan sushi. Amazing. Sushi Animal really foods so vegan. gross, so sad, so bad. Soy sushi. replacements so, so happy, so Perfect. tolerant, so good. Sushi place will always look after you. All right, let's go. It is so much more healthy and sustainable to eat tofu made from mass-produced GMO. Monsanto soy grown by some of the extra people in South America living under a puppet government military dictatorship, funded by massive IMF loans given under the condition that all the extra rural people there grow patented GMO soy and corn for export instead of their heritage crops and spray pesticides and herbicides like ground up on all their soy and devalue their currency so they become debt slaves and must sell their labor, land, and resources for cheap to the Fortune 100 companies, and members of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development who can strip mine it then of their debt slaves grow industrial soy to ship to China for processing into cheap roundup fortified tofu kibble they can sell to social engineered decadent distracted narcissistic westerners who these transnational corporations and banks educate into thinking they're saving the planet by doing exactly what the big investment banks and transnational corporations tell the screens they worship to tell them to do. You can easily have, instead of tandoori murdered animal, you can have tandoori tofu, tandoori seitan, you know, tandoori whatever other old plant alternative other than pieces of flesh from an animal. Purchasing this is powerful activism and will help the IMF give sustainable debt to all those extra rural people who grow my cheap food. The World Bank and transnational corporations are helping us help those extra South American and African debt slaves to go green and stop breathing toxic CO2 and killing and eating innocent animals so we can all move into corporate controlled total surveillance smart city coffin apartments and pay for our fortified vegan kibble, pharmaceutical drugs, and VR porn with social carbon credits to save the planet from the totally real and not made up hashtag climate crisis. Vegan, um, oh wow, well. oh no this is veggie, okay, so they've got it veggie and vegan separated which is good, these are all the animal body parts that you don't want to be eating, Merry Christmas, not so merry for the animals, um, uh, let's have a look here, oh, oh, eggs are not vegan obviously, Oh, here, look, avocado and toast. Wow, that looks really nice. This jittery, effeminate 31 year old boomer is so inspirational to me as a vegan activist. He is the best at purchasing vegan kibble. I wish everyone could know how good it feels to eat soy and corn based vegan kibble instead of real animal foods. I do not even miss real animal foods. Real animal foods are mean and gross and not even good. Mass-produced vegan corporate kibble is way healthier and tastier and nicer and make me so happy. If we don't all do this the climate will keep changing and all the bad things will happen and Bambi and Simba will be murdered every day always. Any of these cakes vegan? Oh my god, those cookies are... Oh no, I was just, that says veggie, not vegan, so I was just seeing that these are the vegan. Only one is oh wow, oh awesome, yeah that's cool. Can I just have these, please? Thank you very much, Ta. Bye bye. Still a little taste test of this soup. Oh my lord. That's, that's amazing. Wow. 
What's your view? I can't think of a better thing for the animal rights movement to yeah. be honest, bro. Um, I think one of the biggest issues with people going vegan is also the convenience factor. Yeah. It's too hard. What am I going to do? This is where I eat. I go to this supermarket. I go to this restaurant. I get this fast food. I'm like, they don't have I am not stuff being there. used. I'm, I'm, I am I'm a grassroots grass. activist oh saving God, the animals and the planet. Around. I have not I'm been duped. Beyond Burger in all of their stores and they advertised it every store I drive past, huge billboards on the highway. I'm like, plant-based meat options. This is amazing. Wow, they're really normalizing it. They're, the convenience factor is through the roof. Yeah. Incredible, I'm so huge. happy. Absolutely, and, they, and they're selling out of it. Yeah. Um, so that's Tim Hortons. They did the same at A&W. They were Veganism so is healthy and rebellious. Animal foods are not necessary. All our ancestors just take them because the patriarchy and capitalism. 12 bowel movements a day is normal and enjoyable. Soy is a great replacement for everything. Dr. Gregor is not frightening. If we don't all do this the planet will die. Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide and was working all alone. If I spend more energy on vegan activism, I will stop craving real animal foods and questioning um, myself. They, they go with their vegan friend, their vegan friend suggests, why don't you just try it, try this. People start seeing, oh, this is delicious, and I feel pretty good that it isn't actually an animal. I don't like causing animal cruelty. I heard these are healthier as well. They're better for the planet too. They have just as much protein. It's huge. It makes a lot of sense. It's huge. They, they have is. millions of dollars in marketing. They have restaurants all over the world they can reach the mainstream like no other they're doing know? all the advertising for us yeah. man i'm like thanks thanks for spreading the vegan message for us i'm so stoked but, but i saw the same people who are emotionally against kfc would happily walk into starbucks and get the oat uh get an oat latte I'm like, Wait a these second. vegan activists are mentally and physically healthy and are not sickly effeminate head case is being used by multinational corporations, global banks, and big money foundations to push a transnational resource consolidation agenda. I want to reach those low income families that are just eating meat, they never heard of vegan before and they go, they walk into McDonald's and there's a McVegan there. Totally. And they can choose that over the slaughtered enslaved dairy cow's body that's minced up yeah. in the other burgers, you know? Absolutely, man. And I think that, you know, yes, KFC, they kill so many chick so many dead chickens, uh, millions, tens of millions. It's not, it's horrific. Yeah. But if any, anyone can change, anyone, yeah. slaughterhouse workers change, we change, people change, businesses change too. And if I was to like, you can't support KFC, you must only, I just think like, we, we don't, we, we're not in a position to have that flexibility to go, you can only buy vegan food from here. We need people buying vegan food from wherever it's available. We, you know, the world's like, oh God, we need radical change. We need radical That's change. Really we need people working from below. We need direct action from above. Totally. We need corporations putting on vegan options. We need everything working together. The money is there. If we can save the banks, if then we can save the world. <laughs> I mean... I mean, there's, if there's something we are not lacking in this world, it's money. And I mean, of course, many people do lack money, but I mean, governments and these people in power, they do not lack money. Eat the kibble, bigots. That's just, that's so touching every time. Every time it brings it brings a little tear to my eye. Oh, little Greta, sweet little Greta, oh sweet little Greta. Greta Greta's expiration date is is fastly approaching. And I think I think. Let's see. Let me let me check. When is Greta's 18th birthday? When is Greta's 18th birthday? Because if I'm Right, I suspect she's going to be turning 18 very, very soon. There we go. Here it is. Here, let me pull this up so you guys can see it too. Oops, shut up, Bill Gates. You shut up. I'm trying to show something to the bigots. Excuse me. Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg will turn 18 on the 3rd 
In January, the third of January, she will have. <laughs> does she expire? Does she is she no longer a viable human shield at that point? Is she no longer a useful human shield? Who knows? Who knows? I suspect they'll keep using her because they've you know when you. It's really sad how they abuse these children by propping them up as media icons. It's so sad. It's so sick what they do to these children's psyche. Um, not just what they do to their psyche, but what they do to them physically as well, right? She's a vegan. And during her most important developmental years, this poor girl has been avoiding the most important building blocks for her development, right? She's been avoiding animal foods altogether for several years now. You guys remember that photo of Greta Thunberg's like Tesla or whatever, just filled with trash and cans from her, her kibble, right? These are the, the dietary habits that we've been given. I'm given dietary kibble. We've been given lies about who we are, where we come from, how to feed ourselves. Right? The most the most basic things, the most simple and basic things, have been so twisted for some of these children. It's just so sad to see like a little girl propped up like that and used as as a human shield, straight up used as a human shield for an agenda by people that are so sinister, by people that are responsible for the deaths of millions of children over the last few decades, right? These are, these are the people pushing Greta out there in front of you, telling you that you need to pay carbon taxes to save the planet, that we need a, a global government, a new monetary system even, a complete revamp of our very way of life. Everything about our way of life needs to be tracked, traced, and approved and rubber stamped, digital rubber stamped, in a Google Gulag, a global Google Gulag. I got alliteration. In a global Google Gulag of social credits, of self-surveillance, right? Not just surveillance by the state through all these devices. It's surveillance of ourselves. This is what they're getting people to do. Ooh, oh, I didn't wear a mask when I got into the taxi cab. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I briefly forgot to put my mask on when I got into the taxi cab. Uh, what's his face? Piers Morgan. Everyone's so mad. Oh, Piers Morgan wasn't wearing his mask. And this guy is on television. Uh, what is he on BBC now? Pontificating about, we all need to wear our masks. If you'd all just, if everyone would just wear their mask, this would be over. <laughs> this would be over. Right? Just on the TV, bubbly faced, bumbling buffoon, freaking uh, uh, Piers Morgan telling everyone to wear their masks and then the dude is not even wearing a mask and some picture that someone took him getting into like a freaking uber or something or a taxi cab and he says oh but i, I remembered right when i got in i remembered to put my mask on i remember to put my mask on right when i got in don't you worry that's <laughs> like these these people are pushing some of the most horrific and blatant scams that you could ever imagine. I don't know. I'm just, I'm dumbfounded. This whole Greta thing and the, the whole climate crisis, right? The UN now calling for global state, and they've been doing this for a while now. We need a global state of emergency for the climate crisis, right? The state of emergency, right? The emergency powers that presidents through executive orders, the declaration of emergency, uh, the governors have used that. Other states have used, including Latin American states, right, to suspend their constitutions, completely suspend the rule of law, and implement essentially martial law. Right? When you suspend the rule of law in a state of emergency in many of these countries, it basically means that the state can take over all communications, all lines of distribution for food. And this is what happened in the United States. If you guys read these executive orders... Right. It, it allows complete takeover and consolidation of all resources by the state, all critical infrastructure, they call it, including labor in the U.S., right? These declarations of emergency, now the U.N. is calling for, we have to declare a global climate emergency. All nations of the planet need to declare that Mama Earth is so sad. Mother Earth is dying. Our house is on fire. Your house is on fire. You have to pay more taxes or the house will burn. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's just the most blatant fear-mongering scam, right? But the repetition, the repetition has allowed it to happen. 
you know, that powerful repetition. You know, well, this is this is okay. This is new normal. This is the new normal. The old normal is bad. The new normal is good. I don't know why it's Polly Shore. <laughs> it's the new normal. It's good. You get all your fruits and vegetables from Juicy Fruits in the new normal. Let's listen to uh, Mr. Bill Gates on the new normal. California are right now under brand new stay-at-home orders. Uh, as hospitals there, million people in California are right now under brand new stay-at-home orders. Uh, as hospitals there. Uh, risk it doesn't Tapper just have a face you can trust? <laughs> he just he's these guys both have faces you can trust. I like how they cropped out Bill Gates' hands. You know you know Bill Gates' hands are doing this down below. The the Bill Gates nervous rocking hand wringing. These people these people are like are sick. These people are a mess. Bill Gates' hands off screen. That hell of a being overwhelmed. Um, there are a lot of governors uh, who oppose bringing back these lockdown orders and forcing <gasps> business. Oh, a bunch of bigots. They, were, they don't want more lockdowns. What? This is cl to close. What do you think? Do you think more states need to consider taking that kind of drastic action and the kind of drastic action we saw when the pandemic first began? Or can you get this demonic smile. He gets this like this twisted, like hunched over grin. Half of the dude's face is curling in on itself like a wave crashing on a shore. Fucking evil in his mind. It's just like. <laughs> it was such a demented, twisted smile this man gives. I mean, this, this is crazy. Like, this, this dude was born, this dude was born a little baby boy, just like my son. <laughs> this guy, this guy was born a little Guys, baby. If you want to be the big man, the big daddy. To be the big man, but Bill Gates, he didn't want to be an innocent little baby. Bill Gates, this guy became a freaking monster. <laughs> All right, the amount of, um, the amount of fraud, the amount of deaths, the trail of death that has followed this guy all around the world in places like India and Africa. Man, all right, let me, I got a super chat. I always forget. You bigots. You bigots. You bigots like these streams. You bigots got to support the dang streams. And don't support through YouTube. Support through super chats via Streamlabs. Got a Streamlabs from Shay. What's up, Shay? Shay donates five bucks. A small donation, but if other bigots do the same, it'll add up. Well, you're the only bigot who's done this. She, you're the, you're the only bigot who's done this all week, in fact. I haven't even streamed it all this week. But seriously, though, you guys, you guys enjoy these streams. We need your support. We need you to hit the thumbs up, share them and stuff. Thumbs up the video. Share the videos. There's a Streamlabs link in the description below the video. Streamlabs is the best way to support. Here you go. I'll throw the link in here. I'll even, I'll pin it. How about that? I'll pin the message. If it, it'll start, no, it's kind of annoying at the top there, isn't it? All right. Well, anyways, you guys like the show, support the show. You get the Streamlabs link right there. And thank you very much for the support, Shay. We appreciate it. We appreciate it a lot. There's, you know, you get good days and bad days on the YouTubes, on the streams. Of course, every day, every day is a good day. But as far as the YouTube feedback goes from the audience and the streams, there's good days, there's bad days, there's on days, there's off days. Just making sure everything's still streaming here. But you guys make it worth it. Thank you guys for the support. We'll keep doing these streams if you guys keep supporting. All right, Bill Gates, tell tell us, Bill Gates. We haven't even let Bill Gates speak yet. Gil Bates, Gil Bates hasn't even opened his gill. He's about to speak through that that little gill underneath his nose there. We saw when the pandemic Look first began, or can there be a more nuanced approach? He's just gonna he's just gonna screech. He's gonna <laughs> like that's, that's what it looks like. That's that smile, that weird little look how tight lit he is. He's got like extra smile muscles underneath his jowls there from just clenching when he smiles. That that spite smile. He's gonna just release like a <laughs> Okay. Let's hear what he has to say. Speak. I'm sorry, Bill. I'm not being fair. Let's give the man a chance to speak. He's just a philanthropist. He wants to help. Be a more nuanced approach. Well, certainly mask wearing 
Uh, it's even worse than like the demon screeches. Well, certainly mask wearing, so I don't have to do that forever. Certainly you're going to have to all install Microsoft chips in your bodies. Oh, uh, yeah, certainly this crisis is so scary. You're going to have to go ahead and shut down all small businesses forever, certainly. Uh, has essentially no downside. They're not expensive. Bars and restaurants in most of the country will be closed as we go into this wave. And I No downsides for masks, guys. They're not expensive. They're not expensive. This is the guy that's going to save the planet, right? No downsides to making everybody wear a polyester and cotton face diaper that they're going to throw away every single day. No problem, right? How many people we got? Uh, 7.9 billion or something like that. You got 8 billion. Who knows how many people we got on the planet? Is it 8 billion yet? We got about 8 billion people. That's fine. They should just all wear masks. They could throw them away in the ocean when they're done with them. <laughs> just throw them in the landfills. There's no downsides. You know, viral pneumonia, not a downside. Right? Destroying people's psyche because they're constantly seeing people's faces muzzled everywhere they go, they go right? Destroying children's life right? by making them social distance, wear a dehumanizing face diaper all day. There's no downsides. There's really no downsides for masks. It's all good. This is really all good. We've got lots of slaves in China. They'll just keep making the masks. They'll keep making the masks. Me and uh, Melinda and I, we've been working on on really improving the conditions. Uh, That's racism, man. I love to racism, bro. No, no. I was looking really improving the conditions for all these people in like China who can make us these masks. We can really employ like millions of people, possibly like a billion in Africa and they can make masks. We can test vaccine, John. <laughs> Two in a row. Racism, Two, the I same notification racism, twice in a row. <laughs> twice in a row with the same notification. Thank you, DB. What's up, DB? DB says, looks like Billy Goat, <laughs> Billy Goat Gates is suffering from the paralysis effects of his own uh, jab whenever he smirks. Right, Billy, Billy Goat Gates, he has that beautiful Bell's Palsy smile there. <laughs> what, his face is so twisted. Is the face is, his face is so twisted. Why? <laughs> All right, Rothbardian. What's up, Rothbardian? Donates five bucks. Says, you and Jay Dyer talk about self-sufficiency. Look into agorism. Agorism. Personally, a lot of what you promote besides orthodoxy is based around counter-economics. Check out the works of Samuel Konkin. I'll write that down, Samuel Konkin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rothbardian. Samuel Konkin. Agorism. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thanks for the support, guys. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you very much. Thank you for sending this non-essential. Remember, YouTube has deemed this stream non-essential. This stream is a non-essential stream. Thank you guys for supporting it. You guys must be, you guys must be essentials. Supporting us, non-essential streams. Um, so no downsides to masks, Bill Gates. Okay. Okay, Bill Gates. No downsides to masks. Bars and restaurants in most of the country will be closed as we go into this wave. And I think, sadly, that's this appropriate. Wave. Sadly, that's it's appropriate. That's appropriate. He's, he said so, right? You guys remember? Um, Bill Gates gets to call the shots. He gets to decide. Right, global technocrats get to decide policy, and that's good. Right, that's good. They know what's good for you. They know what's best for everybody, and that's closing down all your businesses, bars, restaurants. You don't need those. Bill Gates says that's not necessary. This is good. That's appropriate. Depending on how severe it is, the decision about schools is much more complicated because they're, you know, the benefits are pretty high. The amount of transmission is not the same as in restaurants and bars. So, uh, you know, trade-offs will happen. Well, so the children can still go to the youth indoctrination centers. Don't worry, we're gonna wire those up with all sorts of radiation. We're gonna fill those up with millimeter wave transmitters. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, we're gonna pack them into there and uh, we're gonna fill their minds with all sorts of nonsense and we're gonna teach them socially, uh, social distancing. We're gonna teach them how to be the activists of the future. We're gonna groom them and shape them just like we did to the millennials, just like we did to the millennials and Gen Z in the public school, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and accelerate it. Right? We're gonna throw some VR goggles on them 
and, uh, and, and teach them about climate justice every day. All right, we're going we're to teach them to, uh, to snitch on their parents for not wearing a mask or for giving them a hug. Up to be made, but this, the next four to six months uh, really call on us uh, to, to do our best because we can see that this will end and you don't want you know, somebody you love to be the last to die of coronavirus. When do you think life will fully return to what we thought of as normal? back in January. No masks, no social distancing, uh, no other protective measures. Necessary. Protective measures, those are protective, but no other safety protective, happy, healthy measures. No, no more happy, healthy, safe, make everyone happy, live forever measures. <laughs> Certainly by the summer, we'll be way closer to normal than we are now. Oh. But even through early 2022, unless huh? we help other countries get rid of this disease. <laughs> this disease that we're testing for with a PCR exam, right? That we've, that we've never proven that we've isolated, right? We, we keep talking about the disease. The disease we're testing for little fragments, little bits of genetic material. That if amplified enough, it can make it, we can make it look like anybody has this. Right? Like Kerry Mullis, the guy who invented the PCR exam, said it's a huge problem the way that the PCR is being represented. Because if you run enough cycles, you can make it seem like you can show that anything is in anybody. <laughs> All right, but until the whole world, until we, who's we? Until we get... The whole world under control. Get the virus under control, right? And what is the virus? The virus is something that is in all the people. And we have to assume it's in everybody. Right? It's probably in your neighbors. Probably in your, It's invisible. It's all over the place. You can be asymptomatic. You don't have to be sick to be carrying it. We should assume everybody has it. Right? it was a, so we, we're going to have to control. What do we have to control? People. You don't have to control a virus. You want to control people, the movement of people, the communications of people, the thoughts of people. Even the biological flow of energy through the body of people, these people <laughs> want to monitor technologically and, and control. And this, it's not about when he says, until we get the virus under control. It really means until we get these people under control. And the virus is the invisible cooties boogeyman that's in all the people. And then there will be another virus and another virus and another virus. Unless people say, we are done with the games. We're not going to allow you to shut down our businesses. We're not going to allow you to treat our children like walking biohazards. We're not going to allow you to treat us like bipedal bioweapons. We're not going to allow you to dehumanize us anymore. We're not going to allow you to close our businesses, impoverish us, and enslave us. We won't do this. Unless people say that, this will continue, right? It's, there's, if people don't stand up and say, no, we're going to work. We're opening our businesses. We're hugging our grandparents. We're going to be with our families. They will keep pushing. So you hear him, he's telling you, it'll never go back to normal. Oh, 2022, 2022, it's probably still going to be the same unless the whole world does exactly what we say. And we're always shifting the new guidelines. The goalposts are always changing. There's no defined exit. There was no defined entrance. The entrance into this was done through fear and a terror campaign by media and governments. And this guy is at the center of a lot of this. Right? The center of the dialogue about this, controlling the narrative about this. And there's no exit that they've defined. There's no, there's no point where there's, okay, well, we can get out of it. We're done. It's just constant, constant. So and the, the exit is only if we say no, if enough people say no. They can't keep locking us down. They can't keep forcing us into submission if people say no. We're gonna be humans. We're not gonna to submit to these lies. And we're gonna live our lives. We're gonna open our churches. We're gonna educate our children. Maybe we should have pulled our children out of your stupid schools a long time ago. 
<laughs> but a lot of people are now making that decision to homeschool. Which soon they will come for. They'll come for that too. As soon as they possibly can, they'll come for that. Okay, but he's, he's, he's saying here, never, never going back to normal. We'll be way closer to normal than we are now. But even through early 2022, unless we help other countries get rid of this disease and we get high vaccination rates in our country, the risk of reintroduction will be there. And of course, the global economy will be uh, slowed down, which hurts America economically in a pretty dramatic way. So we'll have, starting in the summer, about nine months where a few things like big public gatherings uh, will still be restricted. But you know, we can see now that somewhere between 12 to 18 months, and we have a chance if we manage it well uh, to get back to normal. We have a chance. We have a chance. All right, so let's see. We've got, I don't know where this video comes from. This was UK government. May have put this out. Let's see what this is all about. The last year has been really tough for all of us. And this we've all been Irish? doing our bit. No. But COVID-19 remains highly contagious. <gasps> and oh. even people without symptoms are spreading it. So we need to keep washing our hands. <laughs> Look at this. There's just invisible green ghost juice coming out of everybody. It's everywhere. From their hands, from their breath. Oh, look what she sings. She's singing. Oh. Oh, look at that. We need to keep wearing our face coverings. Oh, now, she, now the people in there are safe. Whew. Oh no, no, no. Oh, they almost, she almost went into the, the ghost juice. For each other. Oh, stay out of it. And now we're indoors more. Oh, look at Slimer is coming out of his mouth. To let fresh air in and help blow COVID-19 particles away. Blow the particles away. The particles, they, look again, we're still yet, yet to be shown any of these particles. What are they testing for with PCR? They're testing for bits of genetic material, which if magnified a certain amount, uh, using a certain amount of cycles, right? I think it's over 27 cycles. Anything over 27 cycles tends to yield much more false positives, right? They were, they were getting like 90% false positives at one point. There have, been, there have even been labs that have had everything is positive, right? 100% positives. Some labs were putting out these results. Why is that? If you run a certain amount, if you run enough cycles on the PCR, it's going to amplify it enough to make it look like anything in anybody. Has it, right? A Coca-Cola, a glass of Coke was tested <laughs> recently. I forget where this was. I, I didn't pull the clip up here. Some government official, I think it might have been in Germany, tested a, a cup of Coke. A cup of Coca-Cola was, guess what? It was positive. It was positive. Awesome. Let's keep doing all we can to protect each other and help stop the spread. Remember, hands, face, space, and let fresh air in. Hands, face, space. It was when Boris Johnson gives his little speeches, his podium, hands, face, space. I'm trying to get to the shot where they're... They almost touch each other. This is the best. And we need She's to like, keep oh, making I show you, but just just stay back. Oh, oh, there we go. You're safe. Look, she's an asymptomatic carrier. Ooh. It's everywhere, right? This is <laughs> it's everywhere. Be terrified. Be terrified. They're, they're turning people into paranoid schizophrenics, essentially. They're turning people into freaking paranoid schizophrenics who think that there's invisible bug gas juice. Invisible ghost juice everywhere. Everywhere. You can't test for it. You just got to assume it's everywhere. <laughs> they can't show you it, but it's everywhere. And you got to wear those face diapers. If you don't wear that, you're going to die. Or you you hate everybody. If you, if you don't wear that, you're trying to kill everybody. So, I mean, we're now nine months deep into this. Right? This, the spell is so 
is laid on so thick. It's laid on so thick. And now Bill Gates is saying, no, it, we might never go back to normal. Maybe two years from now. Maybe in the summer it'll be a little bit better. But until the whole world, until we got the whole world under control, then we, we can't. We just can't open businesses. You have to all wait for your Amazon kibble rations. But don't worry, the Pope, Prince Charles, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, they want to implement global universal basic income based on carbon credits, based on behaviorism, right? and they'll give you social justice points, climate justice points for your behaviors. Right? You get to, if you rat on your family, you get some social credit juice. You go and you get your injections, you'll get your social credit points. This is what's being rolled out. This is what's being promoted. Again, unless people say, no, we're not going to support this. We're going to produce our own food. We're going to create real resilient food distribution networks in our communities. We are going to educate our own children. We are not going to take part in this until en masse. Until en masse, people say, uh-uh, we ain't doing it. They'll keep pushing it. Alberta unveils menacing COVID-19 mascot and new ad campaign. So check out this, uh, this new ad in Canada. Come on, man. Here it is. tell you all oh, the science listen to the science listen to the experts where's the science in this right <laughs> where's the science in this listen to the science we're not going to talk about the immune system at all we're not going to talk about the importance no proper nutrition right of sunlight <laughs> of just basic lifestyle and health factors and we're not going to talk about the importance of insulin sensitivity the role of insulin resistance in almost every single one of the preconditions that they say make us more susceptible to die from viruses, from pneumonias, from colds, from flus, from COVID. Is that rain? No. They don't, they don't tell us. They don't talk about this. This is the science, right? Look, if you go to a party... The freaking invisible COVID monster is going to be there infecting everybody. Like the, this, this cartoon image of what we tell you COVID is, like the ball with all the little mutated things sticking off of it, that's, that's not real. That's a model. That's, a, that's an image that was used before this all came around. That's not what this thing looks like. Right? But the, you know, this is the science. Listen to the experts. This is government propaganda in Alberta, Canada. Nobody loves a house party more than COVID. Keep COVID out. Follow the guidelines. Keep COVID out. You're Alberta. So I guess they made a whole series of these. Let's find the other ones. Where's the other ads? I don't know how old that was. Is that a couple weeks old? <laughs> it's ridiculous here. We don't have to watch any more of that. So, all right. The COVID... You gotta get the COVID, but don't worry. Don't worry. The World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, uh, the, uh, the author of this book, which I highly recommend people read, COVID-19, The Great Reset. Klaus Schwab, out in Davos, the global economic elite in Switzerland. In Switzerland. Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, they, they have answers, right? They're going to help us. The science, the experts, they're here for you. They care, right? They're, they're here for us. They want to save us. They're going to call us non-essentials. They'll call us non-essential. They'll say that, they'll, they'll gaslight you. They'll lie to you. They'll move the goalposts. It's all okay, though. These are the experts, the experts on television. They all 
just want to help you. Fix the camera here. They just want to help us, right? They're here for you. Here we go. Let's let's learn a little bit about the World Economic Forum. You know, there's sometimes there's good news. The WEF is here to bring it to us. Out with wooden train sets and bicycles. In with antivirus lab kits and masked dolls. The World Economic Forum. They got a cute little video here. These are Christmas toys in the age of coronavirus. In Spain, kids can ask Santa for Nancy with her mask, or Belly, who comes with her own test kit, so she can be swabbed for COVID-19. There's Belly with her own test kit. Here's your baby doll, and here's the, the test kit. Here's the test kit. You just pinch the baby's nose and stick the swab all the way up the back of the nasal cavity to where the blood-brain barrier is back there and touch and remember this is a, a virus that's everywhere it's like in the clouds in front of you the green ectoplasm of the virus is oozing everywhere if you just if you accidentally hug somebody it's all over them right you gotta stay six feet away but to find it you gotta go all the way up to the back of the nasal cavity right where the brain is you gotta tickle your brain with a swab Portugal kids might find an antivirus lab under the tree. Ooh, antivirus lab. Laboratorio antivirus. Including swabs to test hands for germs. Oh, you can test hands for germs, kids. Yay! COVID-themed activities such as making soap. The toys maker says it teaches children to protect themselves from the virus. Kids play to explore and understand the world. So toys can help them process the pandemic. It can help them process. I mean, toys, toys can help them. Right? Our, little, our little demonic icons can help them to understand. To understand that they need to be good little slaves and wear a mask, just like they're teddy bears. They got to take a swab up their nose to tickle their brains, uh, their, their blood brain barrier, just like their little belly dolls. During the pandemic, toy industry sales have risen in many countries. Even as global retail sales are set to fall, how is the pandemic changing your Christmas presents? Like, comment, uh, share. Michelle Law is a PP in the Poo Poo Advocates. I love that one. That one's one of the, it's one of the funniest notifications. <laughs> it's so out of place sometimes. Andrew Herbst, what's up, dude? Andrew Herbst says, uh, donates 10 bucks, says, what's up, Tristan? I'm a longtime supporter of the channel, and I always appreciate the streams. I just started a channel about orthodoxy and current affairs, and I'm still practicing, obviously. Uh, but check it out. It's called Andrew's Harvest. Okay. Right on, dude. There we go. We're writing that down. Andrew's Harvest. Shout out to Andrew Herbst. Andrew Herbst. Andrew's Harvest. Thanks, man. I appreciate the uh, the support. And your name, I've seen you popping up in the chat over the over the years, I think, man. I think I... I don't know. So There's some people in the chat that I feel like they've been around for so long, though, but just the name is memorable. But it does seem like you've been around for a bit. Thank you very much. You guys, if you enjoy the stream, support the dang stream. That's what's up. We got support from uh, from a few people tonight. Thank you, Andrew Herbst, Roth, Bardian, DB, and Shay. Thank you guys for the support. These streams only happen with your support. They don't happen without your support. Seriously, they do not happen without your support. YouTube has smashed, has smashed the ability of this channel to grow at all. Taking us out of the recommendations, removing, and you'll probably find it if you were subscribed to this channel, you very well may have had that subscription removed by YouTube. They so kindly unsubscribe people all the time. There are people that super chat all the time. They still unsubscribe them. YouTube doesn't care. So your support keeps this stream going. Your support keeps this channel going. Thank you guys. The best way to support is via Streamlabs. Hit the thumbs up and the like. Support via Streamlabs. There's a link right there. If you got any questions or comments you want read on air, that's the best way to support. Uh, it's the World Economic Forum. 
These toy makers are giving their products a COVID-19 twist for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a... <laughs> There you go. A Nancy doll, one of Spain's most beloved toys, is seen wearing a protective face mask. That's a protective face mask. It's not for me. I wear it for you. I wear it for me, and I wear it for you. All right. <laughs> World Economic Forum. Another one, another one. Here, here's World Economic Forum. You can just we just do whole streams about some of these crazy tweets from the WEF. Crazy tweets from the WEF. Sorry, I got I'm come, looking at the chat here. We got. Uh, I, I think you could say the word election. You could say the word election. I think there's there's certain things that YouTube saying that if you say it in the stream, I don't think they're like I don't think they're gonna moderate the chats. Don't worry about the word election. YouTube, YouTube's crazy. YouTube has made it to where you can't uh, say so freaking anything. You can say nothing on YouTube now. <laughs> right? You can say nothing on YouTube now. But I think uh, I think the chat can talk about certain things. But yeah, they're they're wiping election shit. They've wiped. They're wiping. Some of my mods, they I, I appreciate it. Mods, mods are trying to keep me on YouTube. They're trying to not let me get swiped off of YouTube in the whatever purge is coming. You know, these purges happen all the time. So thank you, mods. I appreciate that. But I think that word's cool. But thanks. Yeah. Uh, YouTube, thank you so much for providing a place for us to freely share ideas. As long as, of course, those ideas, those ideas don't have certain words in them. Certain, if we don't, as long as those ideas line up with you and your social engineering goals. I'm so glad you, uh, you've allowed us to, to share all right. Oh, wait, we had, we had a super chat. There we go. Hey, Robbie Brown. Robbie Brown, what's up? Donated 20 bucks through super chat. Thank you very much. You guys, uh, Robbie Brown didn't even say anything. Robbie, appreciate that. Appreciate you supporting the stream. Um, best way to support is through the Streamlabs link too, guys. Support through YouTube is fine, but remember, YouTube gets a cut of that. I don't like giving YouTube anything. So best way is through Streamlabs, but we welcome and appreciate it all. Thank you very much, Robbie. Um, so the, the good grown-ups of the World Economic Forum, they've realized that the world is out of balance. It's out of balance, you guys. It's the, the, the force has been disrupted. There's a, an imbalance in the force, says the World Economic Forum. Out of balance, everything made by humans now outweighs everything made by nature. Listen to this science. Look, if you weigh... We weighed everything that was ever made by humans, and we also weighed everything ever made by nature, and we have found that the human biomass is too large. We must get rid of all the humans because humans are destroying nature. Humans are apart from nature. <laughs> this is... I mean, what, what the hell kind of pseudoscience is this? From the year 1900 to 2020... Dry weight of concrete, aggregates, brick, asphalt, metals, and other, they, they claim to be way, they, they've quantified all of this. We looked at the data. We, we looked at the data, we looked at the numbers, and we found that, that they're just way too many people. Right? When we looked at the numbers and the data, they clearly showed, the numbers clearly showed, and the data clearly showed that there are way too many people. Way too much man-made biomass. So, <laughs> look at that anthropogenic mass. And Mama Earth's biomass is decreasing. So as humans, you guys, I don't know if you understand this. This is the, the, the science. The, se the science is settled also, guys. The settled science says that humans, okay, human stuff has been going up. Up, up. Like that. Okay. Whereas nature, when human stuff goes up, nature goes down, 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 like a frown, like a sad, sadness, like a limp, like a limp, flaccid, dead, frowning, sad Mother Earth, just going down. Humans going up, Mother Earth going down. So what we need, we need to, first of all, we need to find an answer to the human question. 
like the human question. Perhaps a solution or like maybe a final solution. Maybe, maybe the World Economic Forum can help us find a final solution to the, the crazy lines. Look at, the, look at that curve. It's going up, up, up. And then Mother Earth's happiness, the well-being of Mama Earth is going down, down, down. If we can just make the humans go down, 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 then Mother Earth will go up, up, up. And the frown turns to a smile. This is the, the science of the World Economic Forum, of their genocidal policies. Right? It's like, I mean, I, I, get, I get sick of talking about these sick people. <laughs> it's really annoying. I can't believe what these people are doing, though. Look at this. <laughs> Out of balance. Everything made by humans now outweighs everything made by nature. So they weighed it all. They weighed it all. All of it. <laughs> and so, World Economic Forum, whose member corporations, remember, whose members include some of the biggest investment banks, and heads of state, Transnational corporations like Monsanto, At the World Economic Forum, the UN have been pushing the Sustainable Development Goals. What do those include? A drastic change in the way we feed ourselves, the way we eat, the way we see food. They're going to move towards a plant-based food system. Well, guess what? Guess what? It just seems like, it's, it seems like these crises... They just keep getting more and more convenient for the UN, World Economic Forum and whatnot. Turkey call after bird flu discovered at North Allerton Farm. And so 10,500 turkeys culled at a farm in North Yorkshire in the UK after bird flu was confirmed at the site. The H5N8 strain of avian influenza was found at a turkey fattening premises near North Allerton on Saturday. The birds will be humanely culled to stop the disease spreading. So I'm not sure how they're testing for this. The H5N8, avian influenza strain. I don't know much about this, but you know, it's just, it's just so convenient, isn't it? But also Denmark. Death of a fur industry exposes COVID's enduring threat. So Bloomberg says the death of a fur industry, a whole industry, a scandal in Denmark over the government's handling of a mink cull is a cautionary tale for the world. At Nudvest's farm, an hour's drive west from Copenhagen, a deathly silence pierces unusual wafts of fresh air. Rows and rows of cages are empty with nothing left but mud and hay. The smell of fertilizer is gone along with the animals. For breeders of small, furry European mink like the 74-year-old Dane, the COVID pandemic has been more than just a threat to his health. The past weeks wiped out his business of more than five decades and spawned a political crisis in Denmark that's turned into a cautionary tale of the coronavirus's potential to endure as a menace. So the coronavirus is the menace, right? It's not uh, using a faulty, fraudulent PCR test. That if you run enough cycles on it, you can say that a, a papaya or a goat, which is what the president of Tanzania tested, a, a goat and a pawpaw, and a, and, a, and a can of motor oil were tested. The goat and the papa were positive. Luckily, the motor oil didn't have the virus. Now, this, this is what they're testing for. This is what they're testing for. So they're, <laughs> they're using PCR to find genetic material, amplify it, and now they're finding it on farms. And guess what? We've got to cull those animals. Right? Well, if they find it, if they test, remember, if you're asymptomatic and you're tested for it, you're going to have to quarantine if you're human. But if you're an animal, they're just going to cull them. They'll just cull you. They just kill them. Right? Not even sick. Just kill them. <laughs> just, we, we tested you. Now we're going to kill you. Early last month, Denmark's government told all mink farmers to kill their stock because of some concern that a mutated form of the virus was sweating more uh, quickly than previously thought. Vest and his family carefully started the eradication of 23,000 animals. While opposition, political parties rounded up Prime Minister Fredrickson. Rounded, I'm sorry, rounded on Prime Minister Fredrickson. At first, when I heard about it, I didn't believe it, Vess said at his farm last week. This severe overreaction has, in fact, done what animal rights activists have been trying to achieve for years. And remember, these animal rights activists are having a field day here blaming all of this on animal foods. And just like we pointed out in the beginning of this pandemic, the whole thing about, oh, this, is, this comes from bats. It's because people were eating bats. It's because people are keeping animals. Look at the bird flu. If people would never touch birds, you wouldn't have that. 
they got to get rid of your chickens. Right? Look at the pig flu, the swine flu. You had massive calls of the pigs all throughout China. And there was actually some scandal right? and some possible scammage going on when people would go through and say, oh, we tested your pigs. We're going to have to call them. And then they were taking those pigs and say, oh, we'll take care of them for you. We'll call them for you. They were taking them and then using them. Right? There, there were all sorts of scams going on, allegedly, on the ground in China with some of this, uh, the culling of these things. But imagine, imagine you're a, um, imagine you're somebody like Impossible Foods or Beyond Meat. Somebody like Bill Gates, perhaps, who's invested in companies like Beyond Meat and Memphis Meats and lab-grown meats and lab-grown fake breast milk. Uh, imagine you're one of these people that's in, uh, invested in all this fake lab, toxic, sludge crap that they're going to try to feed you and tell you that's more sustainable. How convenient this is for you. How convenient this whole PCR positive freak out is for you. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Denmark fared pretty well through the first wave of the pandemic in spring. A swift lockdown helped halt the spread of the virus. So yeah, swift lockdown halted it, says Bloomberg. See, they're, just, they're praising it. And remember the script at Event 201, which the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum, uh, the table talk, top exercise with the World Economic Forum, the UN, huge corporations, and these pharmaceutical companies, and media. Remember what they said? They said, in this exercise, which ended up reflecting exactly what happened later on, in this exercise, the country that fared the best was China. Right? Because they weren't marred by things like constitutional due process, right? by things like ideas around human rights. They weren't marred by these things, so they could just lock everybody down and they were able to, in Event 201, the tabletop exercise that happened in October 2019, before this all went down, they were talking about praising China. And then, of course, what would that suggest? Well, all other countries have to become more like China. And this has been what they've been telling us the last nine months. We've got to be more like China. We've got to be more like them. So they had swift lockdown to help stop the spread of the virus. Just stand up now. My chair's getting uncomfortable. Strict, strict lockdown, and that helped. Swift, strict lockdown. Stopped it. It stopped the dead in its tracks. Viruses hate, hate it, hate it. When governments take away the rights of their citizens, they close their churches, dehumanize them, lock them in their home, and treat them like they're on house arrest. The viruses hate that. It makes you healthy. It helps you. Um... <clears throat> Global attention turned to neighboring Sweden's decision to keep its economy open. That work has been undermined by a scandal over the government's handling of a call of 17 million mink, roughly equivalent to three for every person in the Scandinavian country. Opponents say the eradication of all healthy mink was a breach of the Danish constitution. They killed all the mink. They said, oh look, this mink's got the COVID. They killed all of the mink in this whole country. The whole country. Denmark, remember. Uh, Ida Aukin, who wrote the 2030, You Own Nothing. I own nothing. Um, I have no privacy, but, I've, but I'm happy. I've never been happier, was the article. right? The, it's actually on Forbes now. Remember, they changed. Here, we'll find it. They changed the, they changed the title. That's not it. Forbes. Here it is. Welcome to 2030. I own nothing. Have no privacy and life has never been better. Right? She is a Danish socialist government official, Ida Aukin, and member of the World Economic Forum and propagandist. There was so much backlash about this particular article. People were so upset about it that that the World Economic Forum changed the title of it. Here's how life could change in my city by the year 2030. 
The World Economic Forum after four years. After I've been reading this article on streams for almost four years now. This came out in late 2016, I think. When was it? November 2016. So like four years been reading this article here, talking about it. And all of a sudden it goes viral. Everyone starts talking about the World Economic Forum finally with a great reset. Finally puts them on the map as they just completely take over the global economy in this insane technocratic coup worldwide. Uh, then they, they changed... After backlash, they changed the title of this article and they removed a tweet from four years ago that had the video clips giving you the breakdown of this article and how life would change by 2030. So that's Denmark, home of Ida Alkin, who wrote that article. But the eradication of those healthy mink was a breach of the Danish constitution. They couldn't do that legally. If it was legally challenged, it would have been found if there was real justice if there were justice right if there was justice in this fallen world which there is but it doesn't come from people um if there was justice there then it would have been found that it was an illegal action and it shouldn't have been done but then denmark they killed an entire industry they killed the livelihood of people like this guy they destroyed the mink farms and killed all of the mink. All of them. Imagine. Imagine if this happened with chickens. Imagine this happened with cattle. Imagine if this happened with sheep. They've already done something similar with foot and mouth in the UK. It was a huge scandal as well. So they eradicated all the healthy mink. How insane is that? Yet beyond the political outcry, health experts in Denmark... Health experts say, rather, Denmark serves as an alarm bell to the world. <laughs> so far, it's the only country that has eliminated all its mink. Though as of November 20th, the World Health Organization said, the most worrying strain linked to the animals is no longer circulating in humans. Oh, it's no longer a big deal. <laughs> but they killed all their mink. All countries that have this kind of animal farming need to aggressively monitor What's going on with contamination as a minimum, says Marion Koopmans, a virologist at Erasmus University Medical Center in the Netherlands. Keeping an eye on the animal side of the virus is an urgent question, and for me it is a high priority to understand what is going on. So, here we go. You have to start testing all these animals on farms. Why is this pulled up? I accidentally pulled this one up. Well, <laughs> Forbes. Forbes knows where it's going. Automation. Accelerated. Higher ed. Implosion. Accelerated. E-commerce. Accelerated. Urban migration. Whoops. Tech dominance. Accelerated. Social distance. Accelerated. WFH. I don't know what the hell that is. Accelerated. So, flexitarian diet. <laughs> you can eat the bugs, bigots. I don't know why I had that one pulled up. I didn't actually pull that. We're talking about the culls, right? The culls. But that does tie in to what Forbes said is going to be a new world order. Are you ready to embrace a new world order, says Forbes? It's going to be great. <laughs> Come right here to chat, though, for a second. You guys have been so quiet over there. You've been so quiet. Some, sometimes we get some Streamlab support, and tonight's quiet, man. Tonight's quiet. All the, the bigots who support are not watching tonight. Oh, you guys just aren't liking the stream. You guys <laughs> just aren't liking the stream. Hey, you guys like the stream? Please support the dang stream. Please support the channel. The best way is through Streamlabs. There's a link there. You got questions or comments. Oops. Accidentally pasted the wrong one. I'm trying to paste the Streamlabs link up in here. For those of you who do want to support the work we do here, you like the work we do, you enjoy the stream, there's the link for Streamlabs. So here we go. We got Germany... May call up to 70,000 chickens as bird flu found on another farm. Hamburg. It's from Reuters. Bird flu has been found on another chicken farm in Germany and a program to slaughter up to 70,000 poultry is being prepared. So you're looking at a rollout of a mechanism to create food shortages, right? Just like the testing and the cases. Oh my goodness, those cases. What are we testing for? We're not going to really tell you. Let me tell you, uh, the test is highly inaccurate. It gives a lot of false positives. Yeah, we're not going to really tell you. Now they're, call now they're calling animals, destroying people's farms and livelihood. 
over this test. Right. Poland to cull more than 900,000 hens and new bird flu amid, I'm sorry, amid new bird flu outbreak. 90, no, not 90,000, I'm sorry, 900,000, nearly a million hens in Poland to be culled. Okay, so the state news agency said so. H5 and 8 in this village of Woroniawai is the 33rd one, ooh, the 33rd one in Poland this year. No surprise. It is a farm of 930,000 laying hens. That's a massive farm, right? But you know what they're going to do? It's not just these farms. They're going to come after small farms too. That's what it's really about. It's about making these operations impossible to, uh, to run. Right? You're not going to be allowed to have livestock unless you jump through the hoops. Right? They want to get rid of livestock. This is what people don't understand. And when I say they, I do mean the World Economic Forum. But I do mean these huge, big money interests that have invested heavily in funding these plant-based alternative meats. Right? The, the, the organizations, the, uh, the, the huge corporations and mega banks that fund these trash media outlets, these propaganda outlets like Vice News, <laughs> are heavily invested in this fake meat future. They want to outlaw meat. You want to they find want us out? Off the find land. out. Find out. They want. You'll come at me and you'll find out how strong I am eating a plant based diet. They want okay? you as strong. You'll find out. They just want to make you as strong as Mark Passio on a plant based diet. That's all they want. Vampire Frog donated five bucks. What's up, Vampire Frog? Says the bird flew with bird flu up the bird flu. The bird flew with bird flu up the bird flu. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that super chat. Appreciate that. You guys, best way to support is via the Streamlab super chats, not the, the YouTube super chats. Streamlabs is the best way. And thank you guys who do support. Really appreciate it. There's a link in the uh, in the chat. To support so minks at Canadian fur farm test positive for COVID 19. Experts call for cull. Here you go, another one in Canada. <clears throat> the positive tests come after Denmark culled millions of minks due to a COVID 19 mutation. Animal welfare experts, a animal welfare experts, what do you mean, PETA? <laughs> Want authorities to cull minks at a British Columbia fur farm after five of the animals tested positive for COVID 19. Tested positive. Animals are not sick and dying. People at the farm are not sick and dying. We tested it. Just like a papaya tested and a cup of Coke tested positive. <clears throat> An outbreak of the virus was first detected at a mink fur farm in the Fraser Valley located east of Vancouver <clears throat> after eight people tested positive for COVID earlier this week. Eight people tested positive. <laughs> they tested it. So they, they tested these minks, the BC Ministry of Agriculture, Food, and Fisheries. This is how they will get, that's just how they can do it. Now, I'm not saying this is happening right now, but this is how they could come for things like backyard birds, small family farms, chickens, turkeys, sheep, goats, cows. Same mechanism can be used. <laughs> That's racism, man. I love to racism, bro. Ooh. We got another Palmer Elrich. What's up? Palmer Elrich donated 15 bucks. You, There you go. You are winning so far. Winning the Super Chat competition with uh, you and Robbie Brown. Throwing down the support for the channel. Throwing down support for the stream. Appreciate that, Palmer. Thank you very much. Just trying to show support. Thanks for always bringing good content to the bigots. Hey. You guys are what it's all about. The bigots keep this afloat. Bigots like you keep these streams coming. And another way, you guys, I know you guys, a lot of you supporting via the Streamlabs. You can also get yourself, support yourself, and support our work. Check out Jessica's book, The Carnivore Cookbook. There's a link in the description. Zero, we could call it zero carb recipes for people who really love animals. Because animal foods, animal foods are the only foods you actually require. They're the only essential foods. You, they are irreplaceable. They are irreplaceable. You cannot substitute plant foods for animal foods for long periods of time and think that you're going to do well. 
But animal foods are absolutely crucial. These are the foods we require. These are the foods we need. But of course, these people are attacking animal foods with ferocity for that very reason. Right? To make us dependent. Dependent on the kibble, on the lab-grown, rationed food. These people do not want us to have any skills. Right? When you actually look at this smart city grid that's being erected. When you look at the model, the smart city, it is about removing all skills from people, turning you into nothing but a lab rat consumer. And this is what we're fighting against. It's not, we're not fighting against you know, goofy ass vegans. Right? That's just one little pocket of this ideology that's been weaponized and leveraged against themselves Right, their own selves, their own health, and these farmers, and ourselves, and our abilities, or, and our ability rather, to feed our families, to nourish ourselves on our own land, to provide food for our families from our own land. Right, that's just one small aspect of it, and it goes far beyond just the food. But controlling our food is a very important aspect of it. And if you can entrain entire generations of people to know how to do nothing but look freaking cute on social media, right? But, but uh, flounce around and preen themselves in front of cameras and try to look pretty for Google or to do little TikTok dances or to just behave like automatons in response to stimulus fed to them by their Pavlovian entrainment devices. If you can entrain a whole generation of children to have no skills, to not understand what good nutrition is, to not even understand where good food comes from, which that's already been done to a great extent. With the school lunch programs, like in the school lunches that we had when I was a kid, that was Arby's, Taco Bell frozen microwave burritos, and Domino's pizza. That's what we ate every day. Right? The Domino's pizza was $1.25 a slice. You buy slices of Domino's pizza, Everyone would try to line up at the Domino's pizza stand in 7th, uh, 8th grade and try to get there first, try to run out of class and run up to the Domino's pizza stand. Or they had Arby's sandwiches too. The Arby's beef and cheddar sandwiches. It's just like a little plastic tin foil thing and it's wrapped with a soggy, shitty bun and like really weird, that canned cheese stuff. It's, it's not even cheese. It's like, who knows what that sludge is that <laughs> they call cheese that Arby's sells. That's what they fed us their school lunches and those little hostess um the hostess fruit pie things where it's like a you know cherry pie little hostess cherry pie i think that they're hostess this is what we used to eat this is what we grew up on and 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 freaking like sour strips and stuff they're like the kids that would bring their backpacks full of candy and they'd sell sour strips at lunch <laughs> dangerfield henley says school lunch for me was beef made of gold prep school <laughs> we had prison slop in my school, but I was in New York City back in my high school days. Yeah, I mean, we basically we had prison slop in the cafeterias, but then you had the corporate vendors, right? So that if you had a ticket, a school ticket lunch, you'd have to go to the cafeteria. But like, if you were able to scrounge together like two dollars fifty cents, you get yourself you can get yourself two pieces of Domino's. That's what I used to try to do. I try to bring like two bucks fifty cents to school, get two slices of Domino's. Like, it was just so stupid, right? The, the worst food you could get. And then in the cafeteria, it's just like prison slop. Or you get the, the upgraded corporate food from the Domino's pizza stand. It's so, it's so dumb, right? It's just completely... And this it, they use the same model now to save the planet, right? The school lunch model to save the planet. Stay at home, save lives. We'll deliver you Domino's. Just stay there, jerk off on VR porn for your entertainment. Netflix and chill the rest of your life. We'll give you kibble. Don't worry, we have mandatory vaccinations coming. And we want to help you live, even though we tell you we want to depopulate the planet over 90%. Ted Turner says he wants 90% depopulation. But don't worry, he wants to save you. Don't worry, Bill Gates wants to save you. He says there's too many kids in Africa, too many babies in Africa. There's a, there's a baby boom in Africa. We can't have that. But we're going to save Africa with GMO seeds and oral polio vax. We're going to help you. And so Vice is over here selling the fear. 
While there's no indication as to whether BC authorities plan to call minks at this COVID-stricken farm, experts say it is the necessary next step alongside other measures. What? What? <laughs> what? Experts. Who are experts? Well, that's the SPCA. <laughs> the PCSPCA. That's the expert. Right, so, thank you, Vice. Right, now, Greece slaughters its minks. What? What? Is, I mean, is this, is this is this like a dry run? Right, this is happening everywhere. You've got you got Germany. You know, the Germany was birds, right? But you've got minks called in Denmark. Talking about calling minks in Canada. Now, Greece slaughters its minks. Coal starts at 2,500 animals that have caught coronavirus. They caught it as Danish farmers demand end of killing the 17 million. Greece has ordered the coal of, uh, ordered the coal, excuse me, after 2,500 minks were infected with coronavirus. What do you mean infected? What does that mean? In total, Greece has over 1.3 million mink, but no total coal has yet been ordered. Oh, not yet. Denmark also ordered a call of all 17 million farmed mink after animals were infected with coronavirus. The virus mutated and was then passed back to humans. So where's the, where's the evidence of this? Where's the proof? Oh, it's just passed back and forth. <laughs> what? Farmers? Yeah, to... I'm half your size. Okay, yeah, right. uh, oh, no, wait a minute. I'm far bigger and far stronger than you. Come on, man. Come on, Hench. You gotta pick on me. With that toxic masculinity. Uh, farmers took to the streets in tractors to protest the government's orders. The operation has been plagued by errors with mink left strewn across roads. What a joke. So now Greece calling air animals. And look at this. They're just dumping them in a large hole with plastic. Are you... All right, look at that. Wow. The killing of the animals is taking place at a farm near Kalinori village in the municipality of Voyos Kozani in northern Greece. Eh, just take all the animals and kill them all. How about that? They were tested after the farm's owners had tested positive. Okay, that's so they, the farm's owners tested positive and then they went and tested their animals. So 300 breeders have been tested for the coronavirus with 10 found positive, right? Like, and, and what's the false positive rate again? How many cycles are you running on that PCR to magnify little fragments of genetic material? So now they're, they're telling you, oh, it's just evolving. The, the virus is evolving. It's gonna get worse. More fear. Oh, we gotta kill all your animals and take all your jobs, close all your businesses. We gotta kill all your minks. No more mink farming. 17 million animals slaughtered. And of course the vegans are saying, yay, right? I thought, I thought you guys cared about animals. No, this is good. This is good. The calling of minks in Denmark prompts a political crisis. New York Times. Yeah, no shit. What a tyrannical, insane action. How can, how can people stand for this? How the hell can people stand for this? Denmark to ban mink farming through 2021 amid mutation risks. Denmark bans mink farming. Okay, so what happens with the... Now they're, they're talking about birds. They're talking about the birds. Bird flu. What happens there? You, you, you test one farm, then you're going to eradicate the, all the birds in a whole county? They're setting the precedent that if they test positive for COVID, we're going to kill them all. <laughs> and and all, it's funny, these vegans, they're, they're applauding these actions, saying, oh, we got to get rid of these terrible farms. They're talking about having equal rights for humans and animals, too. Vegans want to give animals human rights and humans animal rights. Vegans also applaud when animals are culled in mass. They say should, they should have never been born in the first place. Hmm. Put two and two together, huh? DB donated five bucks. What's up, DB? Uh, does anyone have any experience with WWOOF? Woof. All right, that's, uh, what is it? Uh, something world, something of organic farming. 
I forget what the, the acronym exactly is. Uh, people should try woofing as a way to volunteer on small family farms and learn real life skills and develop self-sufficiency. Are there any woofing opportunities in Ecuador? Yeah, there are. There are definitely woofing farms all over. There are woof farms all over the place. we got some friends that run woof farms. There are spots. Every country has some woof farms. So I, d I definitely recommend checking out the woofing. Definitely recommend that. All right, yeah, what's up, Derek? Derek's up in the chat. Arch Bigot, Derek Nance in the chat. How you doing, Derek? And again, thank you, DB, for, for that donation, for the support. Guys, there's a link for the Streamlabs in the description. And there's a link for the Streamlabs right now in the chat if you like the stream. And you want to support the work we do here. Please go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so, yeah, if anybody else is interested in that type of stuff, look up WWOOF. And you can look for woof farms that you can volunteer at all over. All right, so Denmark to ban mink farming. They're just going to ban it. Let's just ban it. Denmark's government has submitted a bill that would ban mink farming until 2022. while it seeks to address concerns that the animals may spread mutated variants of coronavirus to humans. Wow. All right, so the, the, the prime minister was actually forced to backtrack on the cull of all 17 million due to legal issues. But they had already culled a great majority of them, I believe. I don't know how many they had already culled, but they had to stop. So I didn't realize this. The media talks about, oh, they're culling, they're culling, they're culling. But these same media outlets are not reporting the fact that the coals had stopped due to legal issues, due to people actually forcing the government to recognize right, the legal documents that the government has enshrined. But the media is not going to tell you that. Isn't that funny? Bloomberg just barely mentions it. Where's the articles about Prime Minister Meta Frederiksen forced to backtrack on plans to cull all their mink? Nope. It's just experts say, we got to kill all your animals. Experts say, we got to go test your children in your home. Experts say, if your children test positive, we're going to test your cat. Experts say, we got to kill your cat. <laughs> right? This is, the media hasn't said that yet, but hey, why not? Why not? Let, let, come test my dog. Let's just test everyone's dogs. Those dogs could be spreading those viruses. Shoot, maybe there's viruses we haven't even tested for yet. We don't even know they're there. We should start testing for everything. Let's start discovering other viruses that we don't even know are real potential threats yet. We've got to, we've got to track, we've got to find the next one before it really hits. All right, this is what's being proposed. This is insane. This is insane. Mink farming and COVID-19. Here's why fashion needs to finally say goodbye to fur. So there you go, Vogue. We need more plastic, less fur, more plastic. From canceled catwalk shows, the store closers and wasted stock. The coronavirus has made, the, uh, made an undeniable impact on the fashion industry these past nine months. Right now, however, it's fashion's role in triggering coronavirus outbreak that has come under closer scrutiny. So, again, they've got no proof of this. They're testing for genetic material. They're saying, oh, it transferred, it's mutating, it's transferring back and forth. Denmark is the world's most prolific producer of mink pelts. With between 15 and 17 million of the animals housed in more than 1,000 mink farms when the cull was announced, meaning the mink population is at least triple that of Denmark's human one. The mink are bred purely for their fur, much of which ends up being made into clothing as well as furniture and soft furnishings. Although latest reports indicate that the cull has been scaled back to infected areas in the face of growing opposition and questions over the government's legal advice. Oops. This could prove to be a crucial turning point for the global fur trade. So never mind that people don't want this and they're pushing back. Dude, these farmers should be shutting everything down. They should be put, their tractors should be blocking every single highway. These the, the people of Denmark, I mean, they're already so far gone in their, in their insane socialist government over there. But... You know, these people should be saying, hell no, right? You, you, you do, we need to stop letting these people freaking testing everything. The, the PCR exam needs to be exposed for what it is. This is, what, this is what's very important. The PCR exam must be exposed for what it is, legally exposed for what it is. I believe that there's litigation happening in Germany right now to take this house of cards down. But when people realize the PCR exam is bullshit 
as a diagnostic tool for viruses. And the inventor of the PCR exam said this very thing. The inventor of the PCR exam said this very thing. Then we can find, have a chance at stopping this madness. But look, Vogue's like, yeah, never mind that. Let's just, let's just keep pushing this. We need sustainable fashion. Right? Who owns Vogue magazine, right? Who owns all these huge transnational corporations that make all these cosmetics? These cosmetics that are full of pharmaceuticals, right? Hmm. Well, it's those member corporations of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. They're so sustainable. They're so sustainable. Marketing you carcinogenic creams to put all over your body. They just want to save you. <laughs> this is Vogue, right? They're constantly pushing toxic carcinogenic makeup to women and dudes. Right? They're, they're constantly pushing complete toxicity. But no, they're, they're going to save the planet, right? They're trying to save the planet. Okay, so Danish COVID mink variant, very likely extinct. But controversial cull continues. The Guardian kind of lets it slip there. Oh, very likely extinct, but the cull continues. Farmers must still destroy animals before midnight, despite health ministry var uh, saying variant has not been found since September. So... The Guardian. Animals farmed, so the little little thing here at the bottom from The Guardian. Animals farmed is supported by Open Philanthropy Project. Oh my word. We did a whole episode talking about The Guardian, Open Philanthropy uh, Project. The Open Philanthropy Project. Well, they got a grants database over here. The Open Philanthropy Project, and they are donating to all sorts of interesting, interesting things. Like global health and development, right? The Bill Gates model, global health and development. What's that mean? What's that mean? That means Bayer Monsanto everywhere in every country, global health and development. That means Monsanto and vaccines for everybody. Uh, mass, uh, MIT, AI trends and impacts research they're investing in. Uh, Direct Relief COVID-19 Action Fund for Africa. <laughs> uh, Union for Africa. Right? Uh, University of Glasgow, malaria prevention research. So, you know, pharmaceutical research. <clears throat> MIT, AI. Bunch of uh, a artificial intelligence stuff. Criminal justice reform. Kind of interesting. Yeah, so... Loads of scientific research, criminal justice reform, a lot of BLM stuff they invest in. UC Berkeley assessing COVID-19 infection prevalence in rural Kenya. So they're very concerned with testing these Africans and helping these poor Africans. All right, vaccine development investing in. All right, now they've also... <sighs> the Open Philanthropy Project... This year donated nearly a million dollars, almost a million dollars to theguardian.org. I just ran that article that we read. Yeah, a million dollars to quote, support journalism on factory farming and animal cruelty. So this is an activist issue, right? This is activism from these philanthropists, these NGOs. This is how money flows into media organizations. You realize this, right? You get grants from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for like a billion dollars or a million dollars, not a billion for a media organization, but a million dollar grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Organization will go to something like the BBC or the Guardian to inform people about global health issues, meaning to brainwash you about Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the corporations that they're heavily involved in. Remember, the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is a giant money laundering scam. And that's what all these things are. The open philanthropy... Uh, uh, the project is a money laundering scam. This is a shell game for moving money through corporations, government, and private interests in order to influence policy, avoid taxation. And sometimes even these organizations even use this stuff to like launder money. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not accusing uh, uh, the Guardian of doing that here, but here you go, $900,000 to support journalism on factory farming and animal cruelty. Guess what else they also uh, they invested in? Research and development at Impossible Foods. Whoa there. 
Whoa there, a little conflict of interest. Hmm. Impossible foods. Okay. Well, got your boy, Mr. Brown here. Patrick Brown. Patrick Brown, Impossible Food CEO, is dead serious about making all food animals obsolete by 2035. Ooh. Pat Brown says it's game over for meat industry and, quote, they just don't realize it yet. <clears throat> yeah. Boy, when you've got $900,000 from the Open Philanthropy Project, who also invests in your impossible foods, who can run media demonizing animal foods, all right, telling you that animal foods are destroying the planet, that they're making the, the globe heat up, they're causing climate change, right, that animal foods are bad, that they're mean, that they're, they're, they're creating inequality, whatever it is, and they're going to come out with next, whatever bullshit excuse they're going to come out with to feed you kibble instead of real food. When you've got The Guardian working for you, these billionaire philanthropists like Bill Gates, Richard Branson investing in your shit, when your dad worked for the CIA, when you are coming straight out of Stanford University, a lifetime academic, and now you're gonna save the planet, it must, it must seem, it must seem like, uh, like that's where it's headed, isn't it? I mean, well, it's headed that way because that's where he's pushing it. Right? This guy's a front man for billions of dollars of capital that's being leveraged and used in a revolutionary manner to disrupt and destroy farming, to disrupt and destroy family farms, to disrupt and destroy your ability to access animal foods, to feed your children the foods that they need. So he says, we're going to get rid of that. Our mission is to completely replace the use of animal foods as a food technology by 2035. So to see this, it's a food technology. We try to reframe everything. Well, it's the same thing. There's a burger. Here's a burger. This burger's murder, though, but this burger's nice. That burger, bad. This burger, nice. We're dead serious about it, and we believe it's doable, Brown said during the conference. I was confident that we would succeed when I launched this company, and now I'm completely confident. It's game over. For the incumbent meat industry, they just don't realize it yet. They don't realize it yet. Look, look, they're in Burger King, Red Robin, White Castle. Ooh, Disney. They're going to be at Disney. <laughs> Trader Joe's, Target, Walmart, all these transnational corporations, right? They're big in China now. Right? Beyond Meat, Impossible, they're trying to market in China. Trying to sell it at like Starbucks in China. Here's another uh, PR Newswire. Basically the same thing. Founder and CEO of Impossible Foods, Pat Brown, is confident of replacing the use of animals as food technology by 2035. Brown joined European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, Facebook CTO Mike Schroffer, and tennis star Serena Williams at 100,000 attendee online conference web summit. So you've got Facebook CTO, you've got European Commission President back in this dude. These are thugs. These are gangsters. We're going to get rid of your animals, says Pat Brown. Here's, a, uh, here's Pat Brown from Impossible Foods. I put this one out. I haven't seen this one yet. Pat Brown has a successful career at Stanford University. He left in 2011 to solve the world's biggest challenges. Reversing global warming and halting biodiversity collapse, he realized that he could turn back the clock on climate change and restore natural ecosystems simply by replacing the use of animals as a food production technology. Impossible is using science to do what policymakers, regulators, international consortiums, and multilateral trade deals have so far struggled to do. Make Earth great again. This is not a task for politicians or pundits. It's a job for scientists. Will you join us? So he, he just left to save the world. Just wants to save the world. Hi, I'm Pat Brown. I'm the founder and CEO of Impossible Food. This guy knows what it is to be healthy and save the world. Look at that. Look at those eyes. I trust this man. I trust those beady little muskrat eyes. 
and that strangely moving, plastic looking, tight ass mouth. I, I trust that face. Trust this man. And I'm here to talk to the scientists and engineers of the world. If you're like me, you went into science because you love hard problems. If you're like me, you went into science because your dad was in the CIA and, uh, and he pushed you in that direction. He got you into Stanford University and actually got you a job at Stanford. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, that's what you do, right? And there's nothing more rewarding than working on the most challenging and important problems you can find. And this is it. Our mission at Impossible Foods is to completely replace the use of animals as a food production technology. And what that will accomplish is this. It will enable us to reverse the catastrophic collapse of global biodiversity. Turn back but, the... But remember, they're using GMO. They're using Monsanto GMO soy as a main ingredient in this, right? It's like canola oil, soy oil. It's all these massive monocropped mega crops. Right? This, this company... The Impossible Foods only has 9,000 subscribers on YouTube. They've got billions of dollars of capital. Only 748 people have seen this stupid-ass video. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that people don't really want this. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because they'll just push it. They'll just force it. They've got billions of dollars of capital. They've got billions of dollars of capital. They have massive influence. Massive influence. They've got guys like Pat Brown. Pat Brown. They've got Harvard University. Uh, Walter Willett. Always pushing this plant-based diet stuff. So you've got Pat Brown, international jet setter. Here's a quote from him. Here's a quote from Pat Brown from Impossible Foods. He was an intelligence officer, I guess you could say. And um, Wait, here you go. Here it is. my dad uh, worked for the CIA. I didn't realize that until I was quite a bit older. And um, his job sent me to various overseas posts. Um, so we lived in Paris for four years. Um, that's where I started school. And then came back to the States, and then he was sent to uh, Taipei. Was he a spy, or was he more of a sort of a desk? Uh... I mean, he was an intelligence officer, I guess you could say, and um, was gathering intelligence on uh, mainland China and ran various operations. But he never did any, you know, sketchy, bad business. So he is the sweetest, most altruistic yeah. guy. He was like... The opposite of what you, if you have this notion of, you know, the CIA and spies being mm -hmm. very sinister yeah. and unethical characters is the dead opposite of that. So when, when you were a kid, what did you think your dad did? Well, I, it's, I'm, it's embarrassing in a way. I mean, he would just say, you know, when I asked him what he did, he'd say, oh, I, you know, I worked for the government. And I thought, okay, that makes sense, worked for the government. I only found out uh, what his real job was when one of my good buddies somehow mentioned that his dad worked for the CIA and I thought, well, that's kind of weird because he, he works for my dad. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. And yes, I, I trust this. I, I trust him, right? Like this is somebody we can trust. He does he, the science. The science is behind him, right? He wants to save the world. You know, his, his dad working with the CIA in mainland China ran various operations, but he never knew he did. He was going back and forth. Where is Taipei? Is Taipei in China? Where is Taipei? So, so there you go. Now, this has nothing to do with what Pat Brown's doing now. I just think it's good like that his father served our great nation um, in, in Taiwan. I guess Taipei's in Taiwan is this danger field. I'm, I'm just happy that he served our great nation, that he helped to, um, to help our nation, help our freedom. And so his dad was... Working in mainland China as an intelligence officer for the CIA. He didn't even tell Patrick Brown. He didn't even know until one of his friends told him, yeah, my dad works for the CIA. He's like, wait, my dad, your dad works for my daddy. Oh, my daddy's CIA too? We can trust this guy though, right? We can trust him. From Stanford. 
He's from Stanford. He's a Stanford guy. Nothing sketchy ever goes on at Stanford. Or the CIA. Or both together. <laughs> I, I, I mean, to me, this is just... It's pretty unbelievable. Um, but it is true. Come over here and chat and see what you guys got to say. What you guys have to say? You guys going to be eating the Impossible Burger from Pat Brown? You want to help him get rid of... Want to help him get rid of animal agriculture? <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. We're going to keep eating real food. We're going to keep nourishing ourselves. And we can't let these people... First of all, we can't let these people scare us, guilt us, shame us, and gaslight us into feeling guilty and ashamed for providing food for our families, and for living a healthy lifestyle, for living a rural lifestyle. These people want to make you feel ashamed for not eating their slop, for not moving in their smart cities. Oh, they're so advanced. They're so sciencey. You guys are just science deniers. You want to eat the Impossible Burger? You're a science denier. We can't let them gaslight us into this shit. But also, we, we really do. We have to expose these people for what they're doing. right? The, <laughs> these people like Patrick Brown and Possible Foods, or people like Klaus Schwab, these people need to be exposed for who they are, for what they are. These huge companies that are actually creating more environmental devastation and destruction than most people understand. These, pe these companies that are actually destroying the soil they're telling you that their Monsanto, that their Monsanto Roundup Ready fake soylent slop is going to save the planet. Right? While they're destroying the planet, they're the ones who are responsible for all this environmental devastation and destruction. They want to tell you they're going to save you. They'll make you healthier with their GMO, their fake GMO soy lehemoglobin. They call it leg hemoglobin. It's a fake. It's a fake hemoglobin that's modified from GMO soybeans, uh, soybeans, right? GMO soy, already modified, then modified into like a fake heme, fake heme iron that in animal studies didn't fare very well. These, these people want to feed you this crap <laughs> instead of real foods. A bunch of monocropped, pesticide soaked. I'm sorry, pesticide fortified. <laughs> Kibble. Because that's going to save the planet. Everything else is bad. Real food, bad. Fake food, good. The use of animals as a food production technology. And what that will accomplish is this. It will enable us to reverse the catastrophic collapse of global biodiversity, turn back the clock on climate change, and We're going to make more biodiversity by destroying all your heritage crops and making you grow GMO, soy, and corn. Hmm. They change the way Earth looks from space. To understand how it's possible, look at a movie of the burning Amazon. More than 90% of the Amazon... <laughs> look, look at this picture of something burning. <laughs> look, the whole Amazon's dying by impossible burning. Look, look, the Amazon's burning. Impossible burgers will make this stop. <laughs> this is what a joke. What a joke. On deforestation is and has been driven by... By soybean production. And guess what? Guess what? The part of the soy that goes to the cattle is inedible to human beings. These people misrepresent all of these stats. The demand for land for animal agriculture. some nice cows. Culture. Over the past 200 years, 45% of Earth's surface has been turned from its original natural state to animal agriculture. Yeah, there's a, a, so many lies right here. We, we don't even have time to fact check all your lies. <laughs> but let's keep going. The difference it's so in bad. Bio it's so bad. Biomass. Biomass. Just like, just like the World Economic Forum said, right? The biomass. Mass on the land due to animal agriculture is equivalent to about 15 years worth of fossil fuel emissions. So <laughs> this, this, this crazy moral calculus they're constantly doing. Look at the bugs behind them. They've got the bugs behind Just as a reminder, we want you to eat bugs. At least there's, there's one crab. But we want you to eat bugs. Look at that cockroach. You're going to eat that cockroach. That's good for you. What we're going to do effectively is 
take that movie of the burning Amazon and run it in reverse and do the same for the hypothetical movie of deforestation of all the other parts of the world that are now covered by cows. Does it bother you that in the Paris Climate Accord, representatives of countries around the world signed on to commit- Signed on to commit mass genocide and the destruction of the poor and the erection of a global totalitarian carbon credit system and the complete takeover and financialization of all of nature by people like me. Commitments that accept a 1.5 degrees Celsius rise in global oh. average temperatures. Oh. That is absolutely insane. Completely. We cannot accept any changes in temperatures. <laughs> We have to control temperatures of everything. This is, it's, it's such pseudoscience nonsense. I can't, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've, I've been studying this climate scam since 2009 at least. It was, it, was it 2008 or 2009 when the IPCC scandal happened, the climate gate scandal, or it was shown that they were manipulating data. The fact that they that people buy into this stuff and just the repetition, the constant repetition, is uh, it's kind of staggering. It's pretty amazing how many people buy this shit. But um, you know, people still aren't. They don't want to buy your impossible shit. Impossible Burger fails to inspire trust in GMO industry. For anyone who wonders why consumers aren't inspired to trust the GMO industry, this is an article at USRTK. Dot org by Stacy Malkin. She says, for anyone who wonders why consumers aren't inspired to trust the GMO industry, consider this the bizarre rant from Impossible Foods Chief Communications Officer Rachel Conrad in defense of the Impossible Burger, a veggie burger made more meat-like via genetically engineered yeast. Conrad was upset that a story in Bloomberg raised concerns about the insufficient research, lack of regulation, and poor transparency for genetically engineered food technologies. So Conrad took to Medium, blasting critics of the Impossible Burger as, quote, anti-science fundamentalists, and, quote, setting the record straight with information she sourced from chemical industry front groups and other unreliable anti-consumer messengers who regularly con uh, communicate inaccurate information about science. So... Anybody who disagrees with me who doesn't want to buy my, uh, my uh, shitty-ass product is an anti-science, fundamentalist, nutcase, non-entity subhuman. <laughs> this is, that's their messaging. Bloomberg is not a trusted source of reporting on science, according to Conrad, because the American Council on Science and Health says so. The ACSH is a corporate front group that solicits money from tobacco, chemical, and pharmaceutical companies to defend pesticides, e-cigs, cosmetics, and other toxic products that aren't likely to win over the vegan crowd. Instead of enduring the bias of Bloomberg, Conrad tells us we should take heart in the rise of Mark Linus, a promoter of GMOs and pesticides who communicates inaccurate information about science, according to scientists and food experts. Mark Linus works for the Cornell Alliance for Science, <laughs> a public relations campaign to promote GMOs. Funded primarily by the Gates Foundation. Gates is also an investor in the Impossible Burger. The mis and he's also invested in Beyond Meat. Um, the misleading messaging these groups use to promote genetically engineered foods, defend pesticides, ignore health and environmental risks, and silence consumer and environmental advocates goes a long way towards explaining why the GMO industry isn't winning consumer trust. Impossible Foods had a chance to turn a new leaf. Up to now, most GMO foods have been engineered to survive the spraying of weed-killing chemicals, glyphosate, and now also dicamba. Dicamba, that, that's even worse than glyphosate. Dicamba is so freaking bad. These, these are the companies who are poisoning us. These are the companies causing all the cancer. These are the companies destroying your soil, destroying your children's guts, destroying your health. But then they're going to sell you the fake solution to all of this. Isn't this insane? And soon also 2,4-D, I don't know what that one is, I haven't heard of that, I guess that's like a dicamba, a modified dicamba or something, who knows what kind of genocidal chemicals are coming out soon. Uh, and what environmental groups call the GMO pesticide treadmill, but the GMO industry is changing with the emergence of new techniques such as CRISPR and synthetic biology. It's one of the first food companies out with a GM food product that may actually offer consumer benefits if one likes bleeding veggie burgers. No, 
Nobody wants that shit. Impossible Foods is the opportunity to write a new story, to build trust with an open, transparent process that respects consumer concerns. They blew it. <laughs> uh, we are supposed to trust the manufacturer to vouch for the safety of the Impossible Burger's new genetically engineered protein, which is new to the human food supply. We've never eaten this protein before, folks. Brand new. Brand new. But the company's process hasn't inspired trust. Their GMO heme ingredient is, quote, super safe, according to the Impossible Foods website. Conrad explains in Medium, an objective third-party team of the nation's top food researchers unanimously concluded in 2014 that the Impossible Burger's key ingredient, soy leg hemoglobin, produced by a genetically engineered yeast, is generally recognized as safe. The panel made this conclusion in 2014, well before we began selling the Impossible Burger on the market in 2016. She left out the important facts. The New York Times reported last August when the US FDA raised concerns that the studies Impossible Foods presented in the Gross notification were inadequate to establish safety. The company withdrew its petition but put the burger on the market anyway. That was within their rights but not a way to establish confidence in their product. So this is how much the FDA loves you and the USDA. They just love you so much. They let them put out GM foods that have never been tested on humans or animals into your food supply. And if you don't like it, you're an anti-science zealot idiot. <laughs> so 2019 was the year of the vegan. What about 2020? <laughs> Vice, the pandemic has altered the way many of us think about plant-based eating. <laughs> plant-based. Plant-based. All right, so this is where it's going. This is where it's going. You know, you've got, you've got people out there like Plant Based News here, who's KBW Ventures owner, uh, the owner of Cla uh, Klaus of Plant Based News. I'm sorry, Plant Based news, plant based news. The owner of plant based news is Prince bin Awalid bin Talal's son, Prince Khalid. Right, so, Prince Khalid, who owns plant based news, also owns KBW Ventures, which is heavily invested in lab grown meat, Impossible, and no, maybe it was Beyond, either Beyond or Impossible, I forget which one, and Memphis Meat, lab grown meats, as well as Fourth Industrial Revolution. AI type stuff, autonomous vehicles type things. His dad, his dad is a notorious Saudi royal, opulent, decadent, degenerate Saudi royal. There's articles about him literally tossing midgets. Check this out. Check this out. Business Insider. Tales of the Mysterious Saudi Prince Al-Walid. The Mysterious Dwarf Tossing Billionaire. The Dwarf Throwing Billionaire who's buying up America. This dude owns a huge stake in Twitter. Dude just looks like a Bond villain, right? I think guys all... Let's see some more photos of him. There's some great pictures of Prince Al-Walid in some of these articles. Yeah, anyways... That's who owns plant-based news, right? And it's cheap. Like you can you can own these these little news outlets with whores like Klaus, not Klaus Schwab, but uh, uh, Klaus from plant-based news. You can own little, own little hoes like Klaus for basically pennies, right? It's really cheap. It's really cheap. And of course, Google also invested in a lot of these same projects. <laughs> and it's. <laughs> it's clear that there are health benefits to uh, to veganism, as you can see, Dr. Gregor right here, with his freaking dude. He's got dude's got some glasses that look like they're about a half inch thick. <laughs> that guy's myopic vision with his carrot claws. This is peak human performance, guys. This is this is peak human performance. If you want to perform at your peak. You gotta eat the impossible burger. You gotta give up real foods and eat the impossible foods. And then you can get impossible health like this dude. Come over here to chat. Just a reminder, if you guys like these streams, 
Support the stream via Streamlabs. There's a link right there. If you got questions you want to read on air or comments, that's the way to support. And so the uh, good old good old Dr. Gregory. Let's see what the power of nutrition in less than six minutes from Plant Based News. Let's see what the the power of nutrition is uh, according to uh, according to our buddies here. Well, you know, in medicine, doctors just aren't <laughs> taught about the power that they're. Damn. All right. They're. This is. We gotta start that over. We can't have that with the interruption. This is. This is powerful. Doctors just aren't taught about the. Well, you know, in medicine. He starts out every talk like that. Well, you know, in medicine, doctors. They're not taught. <laughs> doctors just aren't taught. About the power. I like that they, they they cut right at the bottom of his chest, so you don't get to see that that beautiful bulbous um, bubble gut <laughs> that their force can have. So doctors graduate without this powerful tool in their medical toolbox. About eighty percent of what primary doctors see these days are these chronic lifestyle diseases. But instead of treating the underlying cause. Right, they just medicate the symptoms and hope to slow down the rate. So, did he have like the worst cotton mouth ever always? Or did he have a stroke or something and lose control of his tongue? It's, it's hard, hard for me to tell if we're seeing like like really bad neurodegenerative uh, neurodegeneration here or is does he just does he just have cotton mouth? Go blind and go on dialysis and lose their lower limbs rather than treating the cause and reversing the disease in the first place. That's possible with plant-based yeah. nutrition, but doctors weren't taught about that. Uh, Dr. Dean Ornish published Lifestyle Heart Dr. Dean Ornish. Dr. Dean Ornish, who got his plant-based revelations from Swami Vivekananda. Or was that his, yeah, it was Swami Vivekananda. One, one of these Swamis, this Swami Vivekananda, or this, uh, this Indian guru who said that it's spiritual to not eat animals. And that's that's where Dean Ornish got his his super hardcore science from for his vegan diet. That's why it's diet, love, and meditation, right? Dean Ornish, he's like this new age cult guy. This is his whole thing. Proven July twenty first, nineteen ninety, in the most prestigious medical journal in the world, that with a a, a, a controlled, randomized trial, that heart disease. Could be reversed. Arteries open up without drugs, without surgery. So we affect the die if you don't do it. You're gonna die. If you don't do it, you're gonna die. If you do do it, you're gonna live forever, and you'll be highly, you'll be highly intelligent and articulate and handsome like those young men. They have had the cure to the number one cure. killer, which is a lie. It's a lie. The the biggest killer of vegans. Guess what it is? Heart disease. Heart attacks. Vegans still die of heart attacks. And guess what? People who have low cholesterol, according to the studies, the science, people who got low cholesterol die more of heart attacks and they still get heart attacks at about the same rate. But they die more from them. And they die more from all causes. Right? Low cholesterol is associated with all higher all-cause mortality. People die more from all causes with low cholesterol. Why is that? Why is low cholesterol also associated with more risk-seeking behavior and violent behavior? Right? They, they test murderers and violent criminals, and they find a common theme of low cholesterol. Why is that? Why is that now? Why do vegans have more broken bones? Vitamin D, very, very important for calcium utilization. That's built of cholesterol. Your central nervous system, which is required for coordination of things like the tongue, which you see certain plant-based doctors like Dr. Greger here, seem so unable to control that thing. Slurring it all around. You require cholesterol for central nervous system function. Your brain's made out of it. Every one of your cells has it. Your body makes it all day long. And then they tell you it's bad. We're going to measure it in your body and we'll tell you that it's a disease biomarker. And then we're going to medicate you with medicines that are going to increase your risk of fracture and dementia. 
and we're going to decrease this biomarker, which is associated with longevity, and which if we suppress, we know you're likely to die sooner of all causes. Well, we're going to suppress that. It's so twisted, it's so backwards, but this is what you're being told. You're being told, avoid the foods you need, the only foods you need, which are animal foods. Essential fatty acids and amino acids, fat-soluble vitamins you can only get from animal foods. And they tell you, no, instead focus on our plant-based powders. We'll give you powders, eat a variety of, um, of monocropped plants, and then you'll be so healthy if you eat our high markup mass-produced kibble. Since 1990, get to this day, hundreds of thousands of men and women continue to needlessly die from what we learned decades ago was a preventable, arrestable, reversible condition. If that's all a plant-based diet can do, reverse the oh. number one killer of men and women. And it can't do that. It can't do that. It does not do that. <laughs> Shouldn't that be <laughs> no, but it's just simply not true. Golem. Default that until proven otherwise? And the fact that can also be so effective. Look at it. If you, if you get it muted and you look, look at this guy. This, look, this looks like a video, you know, the, the video title could be Manic Schizophrenic Pontificates Alone into a Camera. <laughs> this looks like a, like a schizoid, a schizo mental patient. Trying to convince the doctor that he's actually the doctor. And, and to take off her blouse. <laughs> like, I am the doctor. I am the doctor. Concept that, you know, food is just fuel. And uh, calories are calories. So 100 calories of carrots is the same as 100 calories of Coca-Cola, which is the same, as, right? It's just fuel, right? Nothing beyond that. Um, and um, whereas it's the opposite, it is the greatest um, exposure of our bodies to the external environment. When we have a you know a few square feet of skin exposed to the environment, our lungs actually uh, stretched out. Actually, we get quite almost a tennis court with all the little folds. But our gut is even more vulnerable. It's our greatest exposure, not just day after day, three times. A day. <laughs> Look what he's about to pour into his gut. Look at this picture. They, they're putting these photos like these are supposed to. In, these are supposed to inspire us to be more healthy. This dude looks like he's making, like <laughs> this is. This guy's making a colitis smoothie right now. <laughs> this dude looks like you look like ulcerative colitis incarnate, <laughs> Doctor Gregor. <laughs> Gregor is making an ulcer smoothie right now. External environment. So all the toxins um, that we're exposed to, um, uh, it's really ah, what we eat that's more important than what we're breathing or um, oh, what we're plants. physically touching. Um, and so that's why it's critically important to that low in pollutants, which uh, are particularly um, polluting the aquatic food chain. So the highest levels of dioxins and PCBs and oh, uh, so uh, toxic bad. Bad. all the bad stuff in the fish and seafood. You know, all the mercury from all the coal plants in China eventually settles down to the sea. I mean, everything eventually flows down to the sea. Uh, basically, our ocean... But then he tells you you should eat kelp and seaweed, too. <laughs> our humanity sewers. Oh, yes. Yes. According to the Global Burden of Disease Study, the largest study of human risk factors for disease in history, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the number one cause of death in these United States is the American diet. Bumping smoking uh, to number two. Now cigarettes only kill about a half million Americans every year, whereas our diet kills many, many more. So if most deaths are preventable related to nutrition, then obviously... This is music. This, <laughs> this manic, malnourished shell of a man, wildly gesticulating, manically <laughs> mouthing a bunch of nonsense with some inspirational music. This is a, <laughs> who, who the hell watches this video and gets convinced to go vegan? Who looks at Dr. Gregor and goes vegan? It's like, nutrition is the number one thing taught in medical school, right? I mean, it's obviously. Like, like, you guys, you look at that and think like health and vitality and virility. That's what you look at. You think like, I want, I want to be that. I want, I want to be you. I want to be on you. I want, I want to be you, Dr. Gregor. 
Like who who's inspired by this? The number one thing our doctor talks to you about it ever. That's like that's one of the most thing frightening doctor- pictures I've ever seen. That is so frightening. I need a I need a screen grab of that. That's so frightening. Doctor talks Look at this like demonic glee in this guy's like, <laughs> It's like he looks like he, he looks like he's evil cackling at you after saying something disgusting. About every single visit, right? How can you this distance between the science and the practice of medicine, right? Well, all one has to do is a little thought experiment. Go back um, to the you know 1950s. Right? Imagine yourself a smoker in the 50s. The average per capita cigarette consumption, 4,000 cigarettes a year. The average person walking around smoked half pack a day, right? The government was telling people to smoke. The medical profession... And the cancer rates were still lower back then than they are now. Isn't that crazy? The cancer rates back then were still way lower. The per capita cancer rates still way lower. At the peak, at the peak of cigarette consumption. What was that? 1965, 66. The peak. Cancer rates still way lower than they are now. Now with everybody eating all the toxic, sludge, plant-based substitutes, eating the margarine, having the canola oil, the soy oil, all the corn-based foods. Now, now, we've got higher cancer rates. So, what? What is this? What is this? Why, Why are the cancer rates higher now with people smoking far less cigarettes? The, the diet is now more plant-based. People are consuming less beef per capita in the United States than they were back then. They're eating less meat in general and more plants in general. The standard American diet is about 70% plant foods. Hmm. Hmm. Smoke yeah, you know. Yeah. The government was telling people to smoke. The medical profession itself so smoking on balance is good for you, right? So uh, smoking was normal. Most physicians smoke cigarettes. Uh, the AMA and again, and the cancer rates were still way lower. What the hell is this? They came out encouraging people, you know, saying, you know, smoking in moderation. Oh, that's fine. Right? Sound familiar, right? And so on one hand, you all have society, the government, the medical profession itself telling you to smoke. And on the other hand, all you had was the science. We had studies going back to the 1930s linking lung cancer to smoking, yes, yet effectively ignored off the face of the earth. Until 1964, the peak of smoking in the United States, and then every year basically dropped ever since. One of the greatest public health victories of all time. What happened in 1964? The Surgeon General's report against smoking came out. Just this public acknowledgement by the powers that be that smoking is linked to lung cancer. It took more than 7,000 studies for the first Surgeon General's report against smoking came out. You think maybe after, maybe after the first 6,000, so could have given people a little heads up or something? Powerful industry, right? Okay, so, so smoking, eating meat again. This is this is their whole shtick. Eating meat is just like smoking. Eating animal foods is like smoking. You, we've been doing this for how many thousands of years? Eating animal foods. The, the cancer rates have exploded since the nineteen seventies. Lots of changes, including less animal foods. Lots of changes. But those changes are not more animal foods. Right? So they're, they're trying to make this false association and they're trying to unconsciously get you to link smoking with eating meat. And here they go. They're going to land this plane and they're going to tell you eating meat and smoking are the same thing, basically. It's just the same. It's just the industry is telling you it's okay, but it's bad. Where we are today, right? Most doctors are continuing to eat foods that are contributing to our epidemics out. of diet. Find out. Find out. I don't want to find out. You'll come at me and you'll find out how strong I am eating a plant-based diet. Oh yeah. Okay. okay? You'll okay. find out. I will. Chunk. What's up, Chunk? <laughs> Thank you, Chunk. Chunk over there reminding all you bigots in the chat. Chunk starting the super chat ca- uh, super chat cascade over here. Starting the, the super chat flood that's about to happen for all you bigots who enjoy the show. For you guys who like the channel, you guys like these streams. Showing you guys how it's done. Thank you very much, Chunk. Donated eleven dollars and ten cents. Thank you for that. It says Merry Christmas, bigot. Yeah, I forgot Christmas was even coming. I forgot it was even coming. Thank you very much. 
Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you for supporting the stream. Thanks for supporting the show. Thank you for everybody who's watching. You guys hit the thumbs up. The, uh, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. You might actually have been unsubscribed several times, which YouTube has been doing to many, to many, many, many of the uh, long-term viewers here. So right, here, here's the link for the uh, the best way to support is via Streamlabs. There's a Streamlabs link. You got questions or comments, you want red, or you want to just support the show. There you go. Terry disease, no wonder they're not telling their patients, just like they weren't telling their patients between puffs to stop smoking cigarettes. Yeah? The system is just set up to reward unhealthy behavior. Right? Think about the foods that are being sold. Fruits and vegetables are perishable. Right? They're not branded. There's no markup. I mean, what you want is something that sits on the shelf for a couple of weeks. mean not branded? There's no markup. What do you mean? <laughs> what about all this Monsanto shit? What about Dow? Right? What about Dow, Monsanto, Syngenta? All these huge GMO giants that have patented these foods. Right? That have mechanized the production of this cheap, shitty, low-nutrition plant food. <laughs> what do you mean? That's some, of the, that's some of the best markup. That's some of the best profit right there for these companies. Hi, is these cheap, low nutrition, shitty plant foods. Huge profits, dude. Huge profits. Why do you think the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is funding studies that will then lead to the justification of influencing dietary policy, policy and thus planetary health? And why do you think they're so interested in that? <laughs> It's right, They're great for shelf life, not good for human life. Until the system changes, until society catches up to the science, we have to take personal responsibility for our own health, for our family's health. We can't wait because it's a matter of life and death. The science. The settled science. The science is settled, guys. You have to do it. You have to do it. We gotta take all your animals, we gotta test all your animals. We gotta test all you. We gotta maybe call your animals. If we say that we find something there. If we say it tests positive on a PCR exam that can be made to make anybody test positive, we're gonna have to kill all your animals. I mean, this, this is what's being pushed. Now, all the while, the foods that we need, the real foods that we need, the only foods that you can eat exclusively without any supplementation, they're telling you, no, it's better to avoid those foods and take pharmaceutical drugs and supplement yourself with hardly digestible synthetic vitamins and minerals, that's good. That's good for the planet. Food grown in a lab, good, right? Animals raised on your land, regenerating soil, right? Regenerative agriculture, that's bad, right? but Monsanto's good. You eat the bugs, get rid of your livestock is what they're telling you. We gotta resist this. Right. Farmers need to start standing up. We need to have, we need to continue to have food distribution networks locally of good quality animal foods, and we got to work on improving those. There are tons of people out there who think that they don't have access in their immediate area to good quality animal foods, but there are databases that can put you in touch with local farmers like eatwild.com. That's a great website, eatwild.com. I got nothing to do with that website, it's a great database. That you can find in your local area, you can search by, I think it's area code or zip code. You can search if you're in the U.S. for local farms that, can, that produce good quality foods that you can get it from directly. we got to be going directly to the farms. We've got to be going directly to the source for our food. And we've got to be even looking at producing some of our food on our own land ourselves. Or, I mean, you can keep rabbits. You can keep rabbits very easily. And it just takes a few months to grow them out. Now, you're not going to get very much fat from a rabbit. But these are things that you can actually, there are things that you can actually raise on your own land, at your house, with minimal space. Right? Now, rabbits is a really good one. I know it's not, it doesn't sound so great. It's not as great as a nice T-bone or a ribeye or brisket. It's not as nice as, uh, 
you know, it's, it's I'd way rather have, I'd way rather have cow's milk and aged cheese and some beef brisket for a meal and then rabbit. But, you know, rabbits are viable. In fact, we're starting to bring in some rabbits here as well. I've got a friend who's been eating mostly rabbits for the last several years. They say by around nine months, the rabbits are pretty nice and fat. And they make stews and whatnot when people raise duck. People raise chickens. I mean, we've got ducks and chickens here as well. You can have ducks, chickens, without having to have tons of land. Rabbits, though, I mean, Barry's farmer agrees too. There you go. We've got some people agreeing. Rabbits are pretty cool because they produce super quick. They reproduce very quick, and they're actually rabbits that you can use for fiber as well. Not dietary fiber, but fiber in the way that you use wool for fiber. Right, so we're trying to get, we got a, we have one, we have one, I think we think it's a hair rabbit or fiber rabbit. Uh, if it's not, we'll use it for, for meat. But uh, it's a male, so we're, we're going to get a female next. We got from a friend of ours just yesterday, I picked this one up. But the um, you know, rabbit, very, very good food that you can grow, you can produce in your own home. So these people are going to start coming for livestock. They already have indicated that they plan on testing livestock. They've already indicated that they plan on culling animals illegally even in some cases like Denmark when they find what they want to find and what they know they can make themselves find using the PCR exam running enough cycles. So hopefully, hopefully people stop letting their cells be tested all the time. Hopefully people start to push back and expose PCR right, and actually apply the scientific method to this whole mandatory freak out this mandatory global um freaking uh what do you want to call it planet's mandatory global lemming fest that is this new global crisis right there's always new global crises there's always new global crises when the last one runs out and it's scaring people enough we got to have a new one so you see what's going on in europe you see what's going on in canada with mink calls this could very well be turned on us and used to justify culling people's backyard animals. So we've got to be aware of this. We've got to be aware of the possibility. I hope it doesn't happen, but it could. And it definitely seems like that's what's on the menu next. And maybe that's why people like Pat Brown are so arrogant in their claims that we're going to destroy animal agriculture. Meaning your ability to feed your own family on your own land. Someone mentioned quails are really good. Yeah, quail eggs are funny. They're tiny. We actually, we got three duck eggs today for the first time. So we're getting more ducks. We're getting more uh, duck eggs going, which is really exciting. I mean, I mean, raising your own birds for eggs, raising rabbits for meat. You can do this without having a lot of space. Friendship, which five years from now, is it going to be like, are people going to be like illegally raising rabbits to try to stay alive and feed their family? I sure hope not. I sure hope it doesn't get there. Yeah, but we do it. We have to stand up for our rights to keep our land, our animals. We have people that are pushing for a total control over all of these resources. And we cannot allow it. Well, again, I'm bigger and stronger than you, so I won't worry too much. See, and, they, and they're so arrogant. They think just because they're bigger and stronger, handsomer, hench herbivore, just because you're so much bigger, stronger, more handsome, more intelligent, more well-spoken, better looking, all those things, more talented, just in general, just better overall, worth more, your life's worth more than mine, we know it, her edge. Um, just because, you don't have to make fun of me, Hedge, you don't have to make fun of me, man, you don't have to be so mean. Keto Paleo 1991, thank you, Keto Paleo 1991, donated 15 bucks, says keep up the good work, Merry Christmas, glory to Christ, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Glory to God. And thank you very much, Keto Paleo 1991. There you go. That's that's one of the better super chats we've had tonight. We got we got a little slower night as far as the uh, the audience support goes, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Maybe I, I waited too long. You guys are mad. You're holding out on the on the listener support because I waited too long in between streams. But I appreciate the people who support. I appreciate the people who enjoy this, who enjoy the content we put out. And I appreciate the ones who are out there opening their dang businesses up, right? feeding their kids quality food. And I appreciate the people who are not going to budge when these people start coming and trying to say, oh, we're going to test your animals now. 
We gotta stand up. We gotta say no. We got Bear Roots Farmer. What's up, Bear Roots Farmer? There you go. Realmilk.com. If you're looking for raw milk in your area, also eatwild.com. A lot of great resources there. Um, we require animal foods. They're essential fatty acids, essential amino acids. They're fat soluble vitamins you only get from animal foods. You can't freaking replace them. It is literally impossible to replace them. So, what can we do? What can we do? Well, first of all, we got to be aware of what's going on. It sucks. I wish I didn't have to pay attention to this shit. I wish I didn't have to talk about this stuff. Right? I wish I could just come on here, talk about nutrition, have some fun, laugh about some vegans, call it a day. But there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. These people are pushing hard and fast. They're pushing hard and quick towards the removal of our ability. To the removal of our ability to produce our own foods, to raise our own animals, to even live a rural life. Yeah, so we gotta fight. We gotta push back. We've gotta teach our children how to nourish themselves. We have to know how to actually nourish ourselves. And we've got to be moving towards being a little bit closer to our food supply. Right? Definitely, like I've been saying for a long time, it might be a good idea to move out of the cities. Right? Suburbs might not be the best way to go, too. Maybe this depends on what you want, right? If you, a lot of you, there's nothing wrong with living in a city, but it might get a little bit more difficult, a lot more difficult with what seems to be developing here. Right? This huge push. For more lockdowns by media, by billionaire fake philanthropists, by the World Economic Forum. Right? The, this push for consolidation of power, consolidation of resources. It's got to be opposed. So we got to teach our children how to nourish themselves. We got to learn how to nourish ourselves too. We got to be using our resources locally, creating networks. The food distribution in our local area. Right, getting involved in things like barter might very soon become necessary as well as digital, uh, digital currencies and social credits start to be rolled out. But we have to push back against this crap. We got to push back against this crap. Right? There's not going to be a, there's not going to be like a worldly salvation from this. There's not going to be this worldly utopia that comes out of this. Right? This is this is delusion. These people are delusional. They're destroying culture in the name of saving it. They're destroying people in the name of saving them. <laughs> this ridiculous fallen world we live in, that's how it is. Yeah, so ultimately salvation is not going to come from feeding ourselves. Salvation doesn't come from food, from diet, from a government. Right? Your rights, your salvation... Your life, our life, that comes from God. That's given to us by God. All right, so ultimately the, uh, the real great reset, the real great reset is not this global technocratic takeover of all resources. It's not the complete enslavement of humanity. Brave New World meets uh, THX 1138 meets Hunger Games. That's, that's this earthly great reset. That's the worldly great reset. The real great reset is God's eternal kingdom. And that's what we really need to be seeking. So yeah, unfortunately, guys, the government will not save you. Unfortunately, Bill Gates will not save you. <laughs> but that doesn't mean, you know, just because this world's fallen, just because the world is nuts, going to hell in a handbasket right now, we don't have to go with it. And we don't have to just acquiesce and allow our friends and families to fall into more delusion. So we got to speak the truth. We got to repent. All right, we got to seek God. We got to seek the truth. So, we'll come over here and see what's up with the chat. What's going on, chat? We got Mike. We got Bear Roots. There's Bear Roots Farmer, one of my favorites. Bear Roots Farmer, what's happening? Naomi, how's it going? Johnny Clinn, Ruben Moreno. We got a bunch of usual faces here. Usual, usual names popping up. It's good to see all you guys. Joshua Webb, what's up? Rat Splatigan. What's up, Rat Splatigan? Good to see you in here. I want to thank everybody who supports the stream. Uh, let's, let's see. Today is Sunday. Probably do another stream on Tuesday. Um, if you guys, if you guys keep supporting, 
You guys keep supporting the work we do here. We'll keep doing it. And if you guys got any last questions or comments, or if you just want to throw some support our way, best way to do it is via the Streamlabs link. There's a Streamlabs link in the description. There's one right here. That's the best way to support. I want to thank everybody who did support tonight. It was a little slower than usual, but you know what? We'll take what we can get. We'll take any support we get here because we get none from YouTube. So we're all supported by you guys. No, no, I'll tell you what. I'm sick of these freaking great resetters trying to reset everything. I'm sick of this. i, I got to keep pushing back. We're going to keep pushing against this. We're going to keep standing up for what's true. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sick of talking about these people. I'm, I'm sick of seeing these people. Yeah. So let's go. Help out, guys. We got, to, we got to talk to our friends and families. We're going to make real relationships with our neighbors, real communities. And we've got to make choices that are going to move us towards a situation that's livable and inhabitable for us and our children. Right now, it's a, we, we allow these things to happen. We allow them. Ryan S. 1980. What's up, dude? Donates 10 bucks. Says last winter they said crawfish ponds were full of the virus. Can't wait to see if they do it again this year. Wow. Yeah, your crawfish ponds. You, you can't even go get your, your hillbilly shrimp. You can't get your hillbilly shrimp. Those crawfish are contaminated. They're contaminated. We got to protect you from them. That's crazy. Thank you, Ryan S1980. I had no idea about that. I had not read about that. Maybe we'll have to talk about that on another stream. That's crazy. That's freaking nuts. Uh, no, but really, we, we got to stop the, the testing. We, we've got to stop this insane testing. Remember, this whole model was put out by the Rockefeller Foundation for the constant testing, the tracking and tracing. The Clinton Global Initiative also got into this idea of contact tracing. And that's coming next, or the, um, the, the, the COVID brown shirts bullshit. And it's a multifaceted agenda, but the food is a major issue in this. The food supply has been under assault for decades. And it's an assault that is accelerating, unfortunately. Unfortunately for us. I mean, this is part of the reason why we live how we did, or how we do. This is why we move where we move. This is why we live in a rural area where we can produce some of our own food. In fact, what's really cool now is we can actually produce, we've been producing a very significant amount of the foods that we eat. We can go weeks without leaving our property here. Right now, it took us a long ass time to get there. It wasn't the easiest ride. But we can't allow this. I mean, if they're gonna try to tell you your crawfish ponds are infected, what's next? I mean, that's, what else, what else do we have? Unless we, if we don't push back, there very soon will be very little, very little to nothing less to, uh, left to fight for, right? So it's like, we can't, we can't keep waiting. We can't keep waiting for someone else to come. Oh, oh, don't worry. Trust the plan. Trust the plan. Just, just get on the train. And once we get to the, the, the train station, Q's going to jump out and be like, April Fool's. It's all good now, guys. No, we, the government's not going to save your ass. Donald freaking Trump is not going to save your ass. He declared the state of emergency that allowed all this shit. <laughs> These politicians will not save you. Yes, some might be better than others, right? But that's ultimately not the salvation. The salvation comes from God. The Bear Roots Farmer, was, yeah, there we go. Bear Roots Farmer who is out there Doing it, all right? Eating meat, making families, raising food. Right? These are these are the real people out there producing food for themselves, for their families. These are the people that are under attack. These are the people that have been systematically driven off of their land and out of business for the last few decades. And these are the people we need to support: local farmers, local producers. Like Bear Roots Farmer. Bear Roots Farmer, thank you very much. Donates 20 bucks. Says, uh, wanted to share that we should fear the Lord. For when dreams increase and words grow, may there, uh, and grow, wait, wait, uh, I read that wrong. For when dreams increase and words grow, may there is vanity. But God is the one you must fear. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 7. Do not give in to the fear of man. They can only destroy your body. Exactly. 
And he's like, we, we can't be afraid of these people. We can't be afraid of these stupid games that are being played. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't need to be aware, right? This is a battle. But the battle is not just, it's not an earthly battle. We're not you know, wrestling against flesh and blood, right? But against powers and principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness in high places. We don't, we're not battling against people, right? I mean, you get these wicked dorks like Bill Gates, genocidal, bond villain ass maniacs like Bill Gates, but that's not the real enemy. You got these genocidal maniacs in the World Economic Forum with their genocide graphs. Oh, look how bad, look at the curve of people. We gotta get that curve down, we gotta flatten that curve. Right, you got these duped vegan activists at PETA. But it's not these people that are the problem. It's the choices they make, right? And we could very well, a lot of us might have even been there, right? People watching this that are former vegan activists out there activisting, <laughs> out there performing whacktivism against their own best interests, against their own health against the people that provide them food and allow them to be alive. But these people are not the enemy either. It's the forces that drive them. It's the forces that drive us to want to you know, kill, steal, and destroy. It's the forces that drive us to hide from the truth and to seek lies and to seek comfortable lies rather than possibly uncomfortable truths. And it's that, that evil, that seed can grow in any one of us if we feed it. So thank you very much, Beru's Farmer. I appreciate that. They, can't, they can destroy your body. They can't destroy your soul. I way rather have my soul. My Braccio Dieta. Braccio Dieta. Mike, thank you very much. Donates $5.22. Says thanks for speaking truth and giving out useful information. Thank you. Thanks for supporting. I was about to sign off, but I'd keep ranting if you guys keep on you guys keep on throwing those super chats. I'll keep ranting. You know I can rant forever. I get fired up about this. Freaking Gil Bates. These nutcases. Telling us that it's bad to be to be with families. It's bad. It's bad. Stay away from your family. Stay away from your friends. Netflix and chill forever, bro. Netflix and show for the rest of your life and wait for your kibble rations. We can't do this. All right? The fact that they've gotten us to accept bread lines already at Costco. There are people waiting outside in the freezing cold. Oh, you can't go inside. You've got to wait six feet apart in the freezing cold. That's healthy. Yeah? Making people stand outside in the sleet and snow before they get their, uh, their kibble rations from Costco. That's healthy. What's up, Sid Meister? No, get that, get that all caps out of here, Sid Meister. All caps. No all caps. No all caps. Good to see you, Sid. But this is, this is what they tell you. They, they say up is down, down is up. Down is the new up. Up is the new down. We gotta stop accepting it. We have to stop accepting the lies. We have to stop accepting the bullshit. I mean, the social distancing from the elderly kills them. And this is well understood scientific fact that isolating the elderly kills them. They tell you we're going to save the elderly. They isolate them and they kill them. And this predicted nine months ago when this all started that you would see massive food supply disruption and starvation increase all around the world. Guess what? The UN admitted it a few months later. Oh, what do we do? Right? Anybody with half a brain, anybody with half a brain understands the repercussions of these actions that we're taking of shutting down all economic activity and rolling out a centrally planned state-run economy. Right? There's no... There's no hiding the truth from those who are open to see the truth. But, I mean, if we're, if we're, if we're going to allow ourselves to have the wool pulled over our eyes, if we seek these comfortable lies, then maybe that's what we deserve. 
And I tell you what, I want to feed, I want to be able to feed my family. I want to be able to feed my family. I want to pass along skills to my children that they can use to feed their children. And I tell you what, I'm not raising a bunch of freaking TikTok dancing, like slack jawed, cock eyed idiots. I'm raising warriors who are going to fight against this. I'm not raising I'm a bunch sorry, of malnourished I'm, I'm not sorry. raising malnourished little soyum. I'm raising warriors of God that can discern between right and wrong. That know who's really in charge. And who love the truth. No, I'm not going to allow myself to sell out to be a coward, to be a muzzled coward, to be a muzzled coward with a freaking face diaper on, afraid of my neighbors, afraid of my friends and family, afraid to speak the truth, afraid to admit what's really going on around me and inside me. I will not. Right? I want what's true. I want what's good. That's our heritage. We were created good. We weren't created marred. We were created in the image and likeness of God. And now here they are telling us to muzzle your face. You're made in the image and likeness of God. Put a mask on your face, you dirty beast, they tell us. This is evil. This is freaking wicked. Tim donated 15 bucks. Didn't even say anything. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate that. SpongeBob, SpongeBob Israel pants. What up? <laughs> Five bucks. Says Deshaun says, I ain't going through no reset. G. That's cool. I like that. I can dig it. I'm down with Deshaun. Me and Deshaun ain't going through no reset. With all them G's trying to sell us on that reset. All them dorks with their G's behind their fake holy of holies. All y'all G's. <laughs> all you all you widow's sons selling them G's. We ain't buying it. We don't want that shit. We don't want this Luciferianism. We don't want this madness. We don't want this global uh, Masonic retard republic. We want what's true. We want the kingdom of God. And nothing else will, nothing else can replace that. Nothing can replace that. Nothing can replace the truth. You can't, you can't replace the truth with bullshit. You can't replace God with yourself, with the state. You can't. All right, chat. This, this has been this has been a nice stream, hasn't it? We got Sid Meister here now. Good to see you here, man. It says I worked the last twenty five well, days again, straight. I'm bigger and stronger than you. Someone. Sid Meister worked the last twenty five days straight. It says he feels like a slave or robot. But uh, don't worry, because Hench Herbivore is still bigger and stronger than you. <laughs> Mike Braccio Dieta donated five twenty two says you pronounce my name properly, so I'm supporting you and your strong family. With six dollars sixty six Canadian bucks, you are too kind, sir. With your with your esoteric sending me them them ducats, them Canadian dollars, six dollars and sixty six cents. What are you trying to say? You trying you trying to hex me with them with them Trudeau dollars? It says five twenty two in USD, so I guess that's six sixty six in Canadians. But Mike Braccio Dieta. If you keep on sending them super chats, I'll I'll pronounce your name right every time. How about that? How about that? Yeah. So again, Sid Meister. Sorry to hear that you feel like a slave robot. But you know what? Sometimes we got to put in we got to put in repetitions like that. We got to put in those robotic repetitions sometimes to get to the next step and get to where we want to go. I mean, my first dude, my first job was in and out Burger. My first job. I didn't even get to flip burgers at In-N-Out Burger. I got to run, I got to level three at In-N-Out. I got to level three at In-N-Out and I got to use, I got to, I got to run the fryer. <laughs> Bear Roots Farmer's taken off. See you, Bear Roots Farmer. I appreciate the support. Hope all's good with the family. God bless. But yeah, my, dude, my first job was In-N-Out. I hated that place. I, I couldn't drive either and I had to walk to work a lot. I had to walk to work. We had to wear the, the we had the aprons with the huge um, clothespin, the aprons with the huge clothespin, 
and the you had to wear white. Everything was white. You had to have like your clean white uniform and shit. I hated that job, but I made decent money there. You know, they did pay all right. In and Out was a way better company than than a lot of other uh, these like, massive corporations. But yeah, man, I remember. No, I hated doing the fries. Fries sucked. I hated working fries. I hated it. But I worked. There were a bunch of cool people that worked there. Anyways, that was my first job. I didn't like it, but I did it. And the next job, my next job was way better. The next job was way better. Sometimes you got to work a shit job for uh, to pay the dues, and then you get a better job. So I hope you're feeling better, man. Keep it up. Sid Meister. We'll have to do a, maybe we'll do a call-in show sometime soon. What do you guys want? You guys want more, you guys want more uh, open line shows? We haven't done open lines in a little while. We haven't done open lines in a little bit. Maybe we should do some open lines soon. Sid Meister's called in the open lines before. I know Bear Roots Farmer's called in. So who else was in here? We had... Uh, Exposing Powerful Lies was in here earlier. He's gone now. But he's he's called in. Maybe we'll do some of those. Mike Braccio Dieta is doing some Ubering, making, making decent money. Doesn't need to wear a face diapy. That's cool, man. <clears throat> That's great. Or you do need to. You don't or you do. Stupid ass face diapers. Yeah, it seems like you know, Uber. What a what a shit company Uber is though, right? Like they, Uber, they made it. They've destroyed a lot of taxi companies and whatnot. But they've created this. They've enticed people much like through like the Amazon affiliate program, how they got all these people on the internet to shill for them. Uber has done something so clever with uh, like getting people like entrepreneurial people, like anyone can go do an Uber and go drive an Uber. What Uber's done is they've created a thing where they're in the middle of all those transactions, first of all. Right? People could have created like a decentralized uh, thing where they're able to, like a, I don't know, like a Craigslist for this type of thing. Where, but Uber's taken a huge cut. Also, Uber, uh, Uber is pushing for autonomous vehicles. They want to get rid of drivers. So like they're going to use us, right? like, they'll, like YouTube, they build the platform on the, you know, the content creators would build the platform of YouTube and then YouTube just guts it and turns it into this corporate whorehouse. But Uber, they're gonna get, they get all like the entrepreneurial people who've got cars, you can go do the Uber, you drive around, but then they're gonna use all that money to then make autonomous cars and try to get rid of the very people who built their company. <laughs> we can't, win that. I mean, that's the nature of the fallen world, right? You only wear a face diaper sometimes when you're Ubering. Um, I don't know if you, here, look, man, this channel, we've, we've been, our income has gone down significantly in the last year, like a lot of people. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to to snitch on you to Uber, Mike. I got your first, I even pronounced your last name right. I know your first and last name, if that is your real first and last name. You've got your profile image there. I'm going to email Uber right now to get some social credit points. I'm going to snitch you out. I have to. I have to. This, this is the new normal, Mike. You've been betrayed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snitch on you to Uber that you're not wearing your, your face diaper. Um, no, I'm kidding. I've actually, I've never taken an Uber. There's no Uber here. We live in the middle of nowhere, but I haven't even, I haven't even been to the U.S. since Uber started, but I do, I think they have Uber in some of the big um, cities here. Mike says, I, I'm hoping Uber lets Tesla owners use self-driving to stay employed. So you just you just send your self driving Tesla out and make money on it all day. <laughs> that's that's an interesting one. Natural immunity says he's seen too many In and Out burgers. <laughs> in and Out's big, man. I worked at In and Out Burger in, uh, in Carlsbad, California, for a while. I worked there for over a year. I worked there for over a year when I was right when I turned sixteen. Got that job before I could even drive. I finally got my driver's license while I was working in and out. That was cool. I was happy to be able to drive to work instead of <laughs> catch a ride from someone or walk. But yeah, man, I don't trust those autonomous cars. I'm not getting, you keep those autonomous cars away from me and off the road while I'm driving and I'm never getting in one of those things. 
I will not be taking freaking Mr. Toad's wild ride in an Uber with no driver. That sounds so sketchy. And people are bad enough at driving. Imagine a freaking robot. All right, guys. All right, guys. Let's wrap it up. It's been nice hanging out. Thank, thank everybody. I want to thank everyone for supporting. Thank you, everybody who supports the stream. Who enjoys the stream, who supports it by hitting the thumbs up, who supports it by sharing it, um, who supports it by hand transcribing it and then tattooing it on your body and then showing your body art tattoos of the hand transcribed um, uh, transcription of these videos. I appreciate that. Those of you who walk around uh, with an iPad just playing the video and shoving it in people's faces. I appreciate that. Those of you who, um, yeah, all of it, all of it. The, 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 the ones who took my advice on a previous stream and got Primal Edge Health face tattoos. So I wanna thank all of you, the thousands of people with Primal Edge Health face tattoos. Thank you for, for supporting, for spreading the word. Um, for those of you who, who just graffiti Primal Edge Health all over the place, of governor's mansions, who've been doing that, don't do that, probably. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys for supporting. If you guys uh, if you enjoy the show, we'll do another one maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. But yeah, guys, get out, get out there in the real world. Don't be afraid of your freaking neighbors. Talk to people. Take the stupid muzzles off. Tell the people you love that you love them. Give them a big hug. And tell them to take the damn masks off. And to look into how the testing works, how the PCR test works, right? Get out there, live your lives, build real communities, real neighborhoods, real communities, eat real food, teach your children the truth. Get out there, go live your life. Later, guys and gals and gender fluids. <laughs>